Hare Krishna Madhavan Prabhu, Amarendra Prabhu. Thank you very much for joining for this highly awaited third episode in our Gopi Git series. So, Madhavan Prabhu, would you like to start with Mangalacharan? Om Jnana Timananda Shya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshun Militam Jina Tashmai Shri Gurave Namaha Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sadisvati Deve Gauravani Pracharane Nirvasesa Shunyavadi Paschacha Deshatarane Gurave Gurachandraya Radhikaya Tadalaye Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya Tad Bhaktaya Namo Namaha Bancha Kalpa Darubhishcha Kripa Sindhu Bhyevacha Patitanam Bhavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gora Bhakta Brinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna So it's beautiful so yesterday or rather last week we we discussed the first verse of the gopi gita i was about to say we completed that i realized that we can never complete <laughs> we discussed the first verse and a lot of points we discussed especially say about how this same verse can mean different things and it refla- re- refers to the the right and uh, the left hand gopis and how it talks about krishna becoming fortunate because of radharani radharani having been born there Or, or Krishna being born where Adharani has been born, and then the musical aspects of the verse and lots of things we discussed. So, do we, if we have any specific points from the first verse, we can discuss, or we can move ahead to the next verse. However, we feel appropriate. How would you like to go ahead, Madhavan? I I would just like to look back. It's always nice to look back a little bit in every session. Yes, personally, uh, one of the big things that I got from the last verse is that this is this this chapter is the kirtan of the gopis, and each one there's there's 19 verses, there's 19 different gopis speaking, and, and they're each expressing their own feelings, and each verse has two different meanings, at least according to Jiva Goswami, according to two different groups of gopis, the Dakshina gopis and the Bamya gopis. I, I like very much thinking about this as the, as the kirtan of the gopis, and therefore we're attending this class. It's the gopis class that they're speaking, and we want to learn the mood of kirtan. We want to learn how to, to follow our acharyas in that way. That's that's what I would suggest, just looking back. It's beautiful. The class where the gopis, that would be such an amazing thing to hear if we had the opportunity. And in one sense, it's it is the outpouring of their heart which is also uh way by which we we learn what is going on in their hearts actually that is one of the purposes of all the prayers in the bhagavatam isn't it that it reveals it it, it expresses their devotion and that by their devotion it it reveals the glory of their devotion their character actually and it also gives us instructions about the nature of the lord the nature of the relationship between the lord and the devotee and the kind of emotions that we wish to develop so the the prayers themselves are we could say a philosophical edification in an indirect way there are some classes which are directly given as a answer to questions but prayers are also teaching philosophy and devotion in a indirect way so yes there's another aspect also that i very much like to meditate on which we also spoke about in our last session maybe even two and that is that these prayers I, I can't say they're from me. I can recite them mechanically with my my stone-like heart, 
but I'm doing them for the pleasure of my guru. And he's instructing me to do that. And by me doing this, it pleases him. And then that, that, that his, his guru is pleased that he's engaging his disciples like that. And then his guru is pleased. And in this way, we're pleasing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And this is a kirtan of our sampradaya. So this is the Gopi Geet. This is their, this is their song. Mm, yes, beautiful. So hopefully, just as Pratap Rudra, as reciting Gopi Gita, please Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So we all can also hope that our discussing this Gopi Gita will please Lord Chaitanya. And just as Pratap Rudra got some mercy, we also can hope to get some mercy. Yes, sir. Okay. Samarindra Prabhu? Adandru, you want to add something else? Or when can move on to? Yeah, Amarindra Prabhu? Uh, so I really like this point of um, the prayers. We, we uh, started on a very wonderful um, note. Um, we see that this this common thread of offering prayers is found in all the cantos of Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam can be studied through different angles of vision. Of course, there's the philosophy, there are the pastimes, there are the commentaries. But I personally uh, like to meditate on the prayers, and I think they are uh, very relatable. Many of them, as Sripad Madhavananda Prabhu was, say, uh, was mentioning, uh, may not be completely uh, relatable at this point to the to the resonance of the heart state. Uh, but again, it's, it's a good uh, lofty target to maybe someday achieve by the mercy of Sri Guru and Gauranga. We find in the first canto, in the eighth chapter, we have the prayers of Queen Kunti. In the first canto, ninth chapter, we have the prayers of Bhishma Dev. Uh, in the second canto, we have the Chatushloki, not so much as prayers, but revealing the ultimate reality as the truth. In the third canto, we have the, the prayers Chatushloki, of the un- sorry. Chatushloki is also a response, if I am not mistaken, to Brahma's prayers for creative energy. That is perfect. In that sense, that's that also... Correct. Yeah, please go ahead. Correct. Yeah, beautiful. And, and in the third canto, we find the prayers of the child while the unborn baby in the womb of the mother, I believe chapter 31 of the third canto, mm. where he's crying for help. Uh, then we find in the fourth canto prayers of Dhruva Maharaj on, on having the audience of the Supreme Lord in the, in the ninth chapter of the fourth canto. Then similarly in the in the sixth canto, we find uh, the Chatushloki of the sixth canto, the prayers of the Trasur. In the eleventh mm. chapter of the sixth canto, 24, 25, 26 and 27, uh, Amazing verses. prayers. You know, even Beautiful before prayers. that, sorry, before that, in the fifth canto also, if we see, uh, while even the cosmology is being described, I worked on the cosmology project with some devotees and almost 30, 30 to 50% of the verses there are prayers. So the cosmological descriptions about the sizes and the distances, they're only a small part. A major part is, okay, this planet is this far away, this size dimensions, but the people over there are offering these kind of prayers to this form of the Lord. So in one sense, it's not a cosmological description as cosmology as a background for a devotional description of how the universe is pervaded with dharma and devotion. So there are also prayers by the residents of Jambudvi, prayers by the residents of this Plakshadweep like that. In the fifth canto also there are prayers. Yeah, so, nice prayers. The residents of Jambudvi, those prayers are very, very sweet. Yeah, that's where I think the, the great fortune of being born on earth and many other prayers, significant prayers are there. Yes, that's true. And, and we were speaking about the prayer of Hanuman last time to Ramachandra. Again, that comes from the fifth canto Yeah, in the same section. And then we find in the seventh canto, we have prayers of Prahlad Maharaj. Again, in the ninth chapter of the seventh canto, uh, only then followed by the prayers of Gajendra in the eighth canto after the seventh. Seventh has Prahlad and then eighth has Gajendra. And then in the 10th canto, we see right from the second chapter, we have the demigods offering prayers to the womb of Mother Devaki when Krishna is entering. And then straight, we can find the prayers by Mani Grieve and Nalakuvera in the 10th, 10th chapter of the 10th canto when they're uplifted by Damodar, uh, followed by, by the prayers of Brahmaji after Brahma Vimohan Leela in the 14th chapter of the 10th canto. Uh, and then prayers by the Nagapatnis, the wives of uh, Kaliya. I believe in the 16th chapter of the 10th canto text, 33 to 53. Um, and then we have the five songs or the six songs of the Gopis. We have tw- chapter 21, Venu Geet, chapter um, 29, which is the Pranay Geet, chapter 31, which is the Gopi Geet, chapter 35, which is the Yugal Geet, chapter 39, which is Viraha Geet, and chapter 47, 
Brahmargeet. Uh, and then before that, we have the prayers of Akrura. <laughs> so I think uh, this is a very beautiful point that Sri Padmadavananda Prabhu has uh, raised that um, the Gopi Geet is actually the song of the gopis and it's it's offering of the heart. So very, very wonderful, auspicious beginning to our discussion. Yeah. Can you just repeat the five Gopi Geet you mentioned? And Venu Geet is when the gopis hear the flute of Krishna, when Krishna is out cowherding, that's that, that, that that's one thing. Then what is the Pranaya Geet you mentioned? That is, yeah. So chapter 21, Venu Geet um, is um, after Purvarag. So yes. Purvarag is their first meeting with Krishna um, in, in a very sweet, conjugal, romantic mood. Uh, and that is described by the Acharyas around the time of Kaliya's pastime. That's when Krishna dancing on the Kaliya was a stimulant and Uddipan to the heart of the gopis. Mm. And very quickly after that, when there is separation and Krishna goes into the forest, uh, the gopis feel the pangs of separation. So Venugit is an outburst of the expression of Purvarag, the, the first meeting okay. with Krishna. And then we find uh, that ultimately explodes as a volcano of love in the heart with a desire to sing and dance with him. So they leave everything and come in chapter 29. And that's when Krishna tells them to go back. Swagatam tu Mahabhaga. Hmm? Or gopis go back. And as a rebuttal to that, the gopis sing the Pranayakit. So uh, it's very beautiful. Krishna speaks uh, 10 verses requesting the gopis to return and the gopis give back in 11 verses <laughs> okay. formidable reasons why they should stay and that's the pranayaki and then of course we have uh, then um, they're trying to convince krishna that they would be with krishna and then when krishna leaves their assembly again we find the gopi Geet in chapter 31 and then now because of being with krishna so closely and dancing and singing with him their affection and their uh, attachment to Krishna has increased further. So then when Krishna goes further into the forest, the separation is even more. So that is chapter 35. So chapter 21 is, is Purvarag. Chapter 29 is to be with Krishna, Pranayagid. Chapter 31 is when Krishna leaves during the Rasa Leela. Hmm. And chapter 35, after the Rasa dance, their attachment with Krishna increases. And then Krishna goes into the forest. Uh, that pricks their heart. And it is the Yugal Geet, as Sri Padmadavananda Prabhu was explaining last time. 24 verses mapping to the 24 hours of the day. <laughs> and then chapter 39 is the Viraha Geet. Aho vidhata tavana kvachedaya. Not so, so much spoken by the Gaudi Acharyas because that's when the gopis are crying and weeping, beseeching and begging Akrura uh, not to take Krishna. That's the separation when Krishna is leaving. And then chapter 47 is when Uddhava comes and he witnesses Srimati Radharani speaking to the bumblebee in separation. That's the Brahma Geet. So uh, very beautiful five to six songs of uh, separation, all in a prayerful mood as a sadhaka, yet at the same time, explosions and expressions of um, ecstatic transcendental devotion of the gopis. Amazing. So all of these are sung that way? When they're called as a Gita, they're also sung, is it? I think mostly the Gopi Gita that is, that is widely sung, I think, but others are also sung, you're saying. Okay. We could, we could sing them. You would have sing them. Yes, sir. It's interesting to me, too. How we approach these is such an important fundamental principle. And this is, as, as we spoke in our first session, it's always a question, you know, is this legal? Is this okay? Just to look back on that for a moment again. What is our particular approach to this as Gaudi Vaishnavas? Many Vaishnavas, they approach the Bhagavatam or the chanting of Hare Krishna thinking that I'm going to get something. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get purified. I'm going to get elevated. I'm, I'm going to get Krishna Prem. I'm going to get this or that. But for Gaudi Vaishnavas, they're doing it out of seva that I want to do this as seva. And in particular, I, I like that this is service for my Gurudev and for our, our disciplic succession, for the pleasure of Garanga Mahaprabhu. And then all the doors open. And that's why this Gopi Gate and, and this discussion about the Ras Lila, this cannot be avoided. If we want to get that Anarpita Chirim Chirat, that, that thing which was very rarely given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we have to understand something about the gopis. Otherwise, you can't get what Mahaprabhu came to give. You can't understand it. 
So that's why these two things are given at the same time. It's not just that here's this fantastically merciful golden person who comes and just says, have love of God, chant Hare Krishna, and that's it. But there's also the Bhagavatam, and there's also so much stress on the gopis because the two are intertwined together. And, and if we try to approach one without the other, it's not appropriate. We should always approach in a proper mood, not that I'm doing this so that I'll become purified. I'm not using the Bhagavatam like a toilet brush to clean some nasty things, but, but I'm doing it, to, I'm reciting it because my Guru Dev becomes pleased. Prabhupada becomes so happy when, when we're reciting that, our, our, our disciplic succession, and ultimately Guranga Mahaprabhu becomes so happy. So in that sense, it's not only legal, but it's necessary. Beautiful. Yeah, just remembering Chaitanya Bhagavat says that when Shantipur, or not uh, Navadvip, at that time Chait- Lord Chaitanya appeared, it was already a very pious place. But it says gives one of the signs of degradation that it mens- mentions that people recited the Bhagavatam but never mentioned bhakti. And one indication of that when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu started chanting the names of the gopis, it was not, it was a Brahmana who found it uh, reproachable. <laughs> It is so it is that means they had no idea. So in one sense, they were missing the point of the Bhagavatam. Although the Bhagavatam was known, but they didn't know the glories of the gopis. So we don't want to we want to follow the Vaishnavas of Navadi Mayapur, you know, not the Brahmanas who were missing the bhakti of the Bhagavatam. It's a beautiful point. So it's not only uh, it's not only allowed, but it's essential. Yes, true. Thank you. So should I share the screen uh, and we go to the next verse or how do we want to go ahead now? You can decide. You're the boss. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the servant coordinating. This is the monk's podcast. We're just guests here. You're servants. <laughs> <laughs> so here we have. So, Amarinder Prabhu, would you like to recite the second verse? If, if any of you have any points to speak on the first verse, as well, we can do that or we can go to the second verse. Whatever both of you want me to do, I, I will do. I, I get so much pleasure when I hear Amarinder Prabhu's sweet voice reciting the verses. It gives me so much happiness. So yes, I hope he does. <laughs> as uh, Sripad Madhavananda Prabhu was saying that all of our spiritual practice is only for the pleasure of Sri Guru. So for the pleasure of Shripad Madhavananda Prabhu, I would like to sing this. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm also reminded before we get this, get to this verse, in the Chaitanya Charitamrit, where, um, or in the Chaitanya Leela, where um, the Brahmana in South India is, is trying to read the Bhagavad Gita. Very interesting how the, the Bengali is put. The, the, the Bengali verse is very beautiful. Mahaprabhu is asking the Brahmana that, why are you reading? What's the purpose of your reading? Mm. So the Brahmana says, Vipra kahe murkha ami artha nahi jani. Shuddha ashuddha gita padi guru agyamani. He says, Vipra kahe. The Brahmana re- re- responds to the question of Mahaprabhu that murkha ami. First of all, I am a fool. I am not a scholar. I am not a knowledgeable person. I am not a you know, Gopi Geet singer. Murkhami. <laughs> I am a fool. And Arthanahija. <laughs> I totally agree that I don't know the meaning. Then why are you reading? Shuddha Ashuddha Gita Padi. I sometimes read it correctly and sometimes incorrectly. But the purpose is Guru Agyamani. Just to fulfill the Guru Agya, the instruction of my Guru. My Guru Maharaj told me to read and that is why I am reading. I don't know anything less or anything more than that. So I was I was uh, reminded of that verse in the heart when Sri Padmukundatta Prabhu said that the purpose of our bhajan, Prathamam to Guru Pujya Manyatha Nishvala Bhavit. The Hari Bhakti Vilas describes that if Krishna is worshipped without Sri Guru, then our puja becomes uh, Nishvala, useless. So Prathamam to Guru Pujya. First of all, Guru must be worshipped, whether it is Japa or Kirtan or Bhagavat Shravan or Dham Pariyatan. Even when we are doing Govardhan Parikrama, it could be a good meditation to meditate that Sri Guru Pada Padma, the lotus feet of Sri Guru is walking ahead and I am simply walking behind his footsteps. I am not doing any Govardhan Parikrama. The Ahamta Mamata, that I am the one who is doing it, 
will be completely lost if you think, no, I am just following my Guru Maharaj. He is the doer. He is doing Giriraj Parikrama. I am simply walking. Krishna se tomar, Krishna dite paro, tumara shakati ache, ami to kangal. Krishna, Krishna boli dai tava pache pache. Our acharyas have taught to run behind the acharya. So whether it is seva, puja, bhagavat shravan, um, the acharya is doing. The acharya is worshipping the deity. I am simply doing achuman on his behalf. He is telling me, now pick up this Govardhan Srila and massage him. So, okay, I am doing it. <laughs> he is telling me to, uh, you know, clean the room. Although we may be cleaning our own room, but the meditation could be, this is this belongs to my Guru Maharaj. And it is my duty to keep it clean. So then the work is done without the, the possessive mentality of who is doing it. Uh, I am, I, it's, I'm not doing it for myself. So even uh, offering broom seva, sohani seva, as they call in Hindi, to the room, cleaning up the room could also be devotional service because the intention is prathamam tu gurum pujyam anyathan only for the pleasure of yasya prasada, bhaga prasada. So uh, for the pleasure of Sri Padmadavananda Prabhu, I would like to uh, read the second verse. Yes, please. Thank you. Gopiu Chuhu Sharadu Dashaye Sadhu Jata Sad Sarasi Jodhara Shri Mushadrisha Surath Nath Te Ashulk Dasika Varani Ghanato Neha Kim Vadah Beautiful. So Basically, this was. You want to paraphrase the translation? Is there a few? Okay. So I'll, I'll, basically, the previous verse said, Krishna, please come back. Our lives are dedicated to you. So, as the gopis are meditating, they are, disc they are thinking of Krishna and they are meditating his beauty, meditating on his beauty. So, his glance, Sri Mushadrusha, his glance is so exquisitely beautiful. That they are comparing it to the whirl of a lot autumnal lotus flower. And then that's the first is the description of the beauty in these first two lines. And then second is Suratanathate. So you are not just a person who looks very attractive. You are not only attractive and lovable in that sense, but you are actually the god of love. You are the god of love. So you are very lovable, you are the god of love. And we have approached you out of love. Ashulka dasika. That we have not come to you out of desiring any payment from you. So you are lovable. You are the God of love. And we came to you out of love. But instead of offering love, what have you done? Varada nignato. Varada, instead of giving us the benediction of love. Nignato neha kim vada. How, uh, instead of that, how can you kill us? So... It's a rhetorical question at the end. Kim vada? How can you kill us? So what that killing means, they, they will talk about how in the next verse, you saved us from so many demons, but how can you kill us now? So the killing is, uh, of course, metaphorical that it is. You are killing us by separation. That separation from you is so painful that it is as bad as death. It struck me over here that this theme of death, Madhavan Prabhu, you had mentioned in our first session how there is suicide in the Bhagavad Gita. That Arjuna wants to stay unarmed and he will be killed. Actually, there is another reference to death also in the Gita that Sambhavit Chakirtir Maranadi For one who has been honored, dishonor is worse than death. So the idea is that when death is death is like a, we can say. Uh, a metaphor used for immense unbearable pain, or it's a symbol, not a metaphor, it's a symbol for unbearable pain. 
so for a conditioned soul losing something very dear so especially for a respectable person honorable person their honor is very dear and losing that is like losing their life or worse than losing their life so what may apply for a for a person who is attached to their honor so we live and we have something that we live for so if somebody is living for their honor and they lose their honor that is worse than death for them now for the gopis they have their life but their life is for krishna and therefore to lose what we live for is as bad as uh, if not worse than losing life itself and in that sense they are saying that krishna if you go away if you don't return then basically you are killing us and again this is completely opposite to your nature so those are my initial reflections is madhantru you would like to elaborate Yeah, I, I it was just such a wonderful, wonderful deep verse. It's like sometimes my guru Maharaj would begin to speak on something, and he would say, "I, I feel like I'm standing on the edge of the ocean, <laughs> and I don't know which way to go." <laughs> Even with our our humble vision of the ocean, still it, it's such an, a vast thing. Um, first of all, the, the, again, there's two different meanings to the verse. The verse, there's the Dakshinya Gopis are saying one thing, and the Bhamya Gopis are saying another. and the difference is a very very subtle difference because both of them the dakshinya gopis headed by chandravali uh they're very submissive to krishna but in this verse they're saying that that you're you're trying to kill us and they're addressing your 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 suratanat you're you're the uh the god of love making huh? and and who are we we're your slaves <laughs> we're we're a soka dasika we you haven't paid us anything the only thing that you've given us is your glance mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh so but now how is it you're committing murder so this is spoken by the dakshinya gopis that they're not always just completely submissive but the bhamya gopis headed by shrimati radharani their meaning of the verse they're saying is that, that you're giving this glance and this glance both of them are saying that your glance steals away the the core of a lotus flower uh because of that core of the lotus flower that's a very very that's the essence of the lotus flower it's a very beautiful part of the lotus flower and that that uh glance of yours it's existing here in the sarat udas uda means water asa means a reservoir it means like a nice lake in the sarat season the sarat season the the rain has stopped finally and the lakes become very clear and pure so uh your glance is like that it's like it's stealing the the center of the lotus which is flourishing in this lake during the uh the autumn season and but the the <laughs> the bhamya gopis sorry. they say something i'm sorry stealing, stealing the core means it's like is it a metaphorical statement that that the, your beauty is the glance of your beauty of your glance is so great that it it defeats the core of the lotus the beauty of the core of the lotus or what does steel mean in this sense well steel has a number of different meanings in this verse you're stealing our hearts you're stealing different things krishna is famous as choragra ganya yeah and especially during kartik what we sing is choragra ganya purushottam prayers is speaking how krishna steals the color of the clouds he steals the heart he steals the sins of his devotees he steals so many things mm-hmm. so he's stealing the lotus the the essence of the lotus and that lotus see, what is the essence of the lotus the lotus is famous as pankaja because it it although it's in the mud it's completely detached from the mud it, it's not touched by it so similarly krishna although he's here in this material world he's completely aloof from that like the lotus and he's stealing that aspect of the lotus but he's also stealing the beauty of the lotus and his eyes are like lotuses okay. <laughs> his eyes are stealing so so many different ways <clears throat> but the bhamya gopis one important subtle difference is that they say that, that you krishna you were begging us for love huh? this oh, is an important difference in their mood the dakshinya gopis and their their uh mood speaking this verse they're not giving us indication but the bhamya gopis are saying you are begging us for this love and they're not saying that we, we may read these things and sometimes it's kind of cute 
you know, we can take a mood of reading these things. That, oh, look at they, the gopis, they've really defeated Krishna. And we may think, oh, I'm being really rustic because I'm on the side of the gopis. And yeah, they really let Krishna have it. But it's much, much, much more subtle than just, just rooting for a particular team, or finding some amusement from something, some particular personal pleasure. The gopis are saying that you're begging for this love. But the, the Bamya gopis are saying that. But they're... Their mood is not that now we got one over and you we're, we're we, you know our Radha she's the best. That's not their mood. Their mood actually is 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 the personification of love for Krishna, and we want your pleasure, Krishna. So you are begging for this love, but you can't get it. Now you're going to kill us. Huh? How are you going to get that thing? And so another meaning of this the, of the statement of the Bhamya Gopis is that why don't you just finish this off? Because we can't tolerate we're living, but we're dying at the same time. And Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur gives a very wonderful explanation. Uh, this verse to me is a little similar to a later verse, a famous verse where the gopis say that, that you're burida, which means you're, you're a very benevolent person. But burida also means that you're a killer. You're, you're like a hunter. And so the word varada, varada, varada means the best. It means a benediction. And da means a giver. But the Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur indicates that the Bhamya Gopis are saying that, that you've changed this Da from D to destroy us. That, that like Burida means that you're destroying us, you're a killer, you're like a hunter. And so Varada generally means you're the giver of benedictions. There's a famous verse in the seventh canto, Prahlad says, Yadi Dishyasi me kamam vadam stvam varada shiva kamanam hridyasam ruham bhavatastu vanevaram. The same word is given there, Varada Rishaba, uh-huh. that you're my, my Lord, you're, you're the best of the givers of benediction. So if you want to give me a benediction, Prahlad prays it, then Yeti, if the benediction I want is that, that Kamanam Hiddhisam Roham, that there's no desire in my heart. So the Lord, he's famous as Varada, or Varada Raj. In South India, there's a deity of Varada Raj, the best of the givers of benediction. But the Bhamya Gopis, the Dakshinya Gopis are saying like that in an ironic way, you're supposed to be the greatest giver of benediction, but you're actually killing us. And it's even worse because you haven't even paid us anything. <laughs> but the Bhamya Gopis, they're saying something even more heavy. They're, they're, the meaning of the word Varda for them is that you're, you're trying to destroy us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Although you're supposed to be giving great benediction, da, di, you, you've destroyed our happiness in this world and vara can mean the next world. So you've destroyed everything. Huh? And they're saying that, that if, in fact, we were your property, then there'd be no fault. You can throw us away like garbage. You can burn our possessions. That would be. But you didn't even give us any payment. Huh? We're, we're a, a sulka dasika. You haven't even paid us anything, nor have you accepted us in marriage. We're just free maid servants. And now we become your slaves out of your own free will, out of our own free will. So this is so bad. And, and although we've done all this, still you're the one who's going to suffer because you're begging us for this love and, and you're not getting it. So I, I'm sorry for speaking so many things. That both of you have a lot to say. <laughs> no, 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 it's about, about pouring up your heart. Let me just try to uh, re-articulate if I understood what you're saying is that what the Vamya Gopis are saying is it is you who called us because you wanted our love. <laughs> uh, but, but then, now, you have gone away from us. And uh, you are, we, are, we are not your property. You are not paying us. And when you go away from us, you, you are going to kill us by this. So better finish us off. But by this, you will be unhappy. Is that and right? this is a, looking back again in our last session, uh, Amarendra Prabhu spoke about Radharani leaving the Ras Leela. And some of our acharyas have explained that, that Radharani's leaving the Ras Leela was because she was unhappy for Krishna's sake. She's thinking this is like Kitri, that this is a Panchayati Ras on, on the bank of the Jamuna there. And there's, you have the Rishi, Rishi uh, Gopis, the Gopis who are Rishis, and the Gopis who are the Vedas. And, and it, it's like Kitri, it's mixed. And this, Krishna deserves something better. He, he needs something better. So Radharani left. With that design, and then later there was another Ras Leela near Gobardhan. Is that purpose? Oh. So the same thing. The, the Gopi's mood that we want the topmost for you. 
And if we try to understand it just in a shallow way that, yeah, the gopis, they really, they beat Krishna and they're making Krishna get on his knees and pray and we like that. And we may think like that for our personal entertainment, but we should be careful. It's much, much more subtle than that, much uh-huh. deeper. Amazing. So there is this whole description that there are various kinds of gopis. So what you're saying is, because they're just like in Parikshit Maharaj, when Parikshit Maharaj is hearing from Shukadeva Goswami, they're not just devotees, others were also hearing. That's why Parikshit Maharaj also asked some questions so that they know Rasabha. So something similar, you're saying that in the Ras Leela, when the gopis were there, at that time, there were various kinds of gopis and not all of them were at the level where they could relish pure love. So Radharani wanted to have... The Rishi Chari gopis and the Muni Chari gopis. Yes. So, yeah, so this is also a big subject. You know, so the Rishi Chari gopis are the gopis, I think, who were in Ram Leela and who desired to be with Lord Ram. And then they came to uh, they came to Krishna Leela as the gopis. And so basically, those who are having... Like last time we discussed also the Sajatiya, that principle applies here also. So Radharani wants to enjoy the Ras Leela with those who, with those gopis who are really like-minded. Yeah, wonderful. She wants Krishna to enjoy it. She wants Krishna to get the most pleasure. Oh, and these okay. Rishi Chari gopis and Muni Chari gopis, it's just like, like well water. But, but the, oh. the uh, Astasakis, the Astas, Astamandris, that's like cream. And it's going to give Krishna so much more pleasure. And for that, that reason, at Chandra Sarovar, there was another Rasli that would just, invitation only. <laughs> it was very intimate gopis. Oh, beautiful. Amazing. And that has a lot to do with Jagannath Puri also, but that's a whole nother discussion. <laughs> oh, there's so much. Eh? Amazing. Yes, Amarindra Uh The Bhagavatam describes darshanam no didrikshunam dehi bhagavatarchitam Rupam, Priyatanam, Swanam, Sarvendriya Gunanjana. That the form of the Lord is uh, very pleasing. Very, very pleasing. Darshanam no Didrikshunam. O oh Lord, please give us darshan. Uh, why we want darshan? Rupam, Priyatanam, tri, Priyatamam, Swanam, Sarva Indriya Gunanjana. My Lord, just by looking at your form as Shama Sundar, it satisfies all our senses. So the form of the Lord is actually very pleasing. There is no example given in Shastra where the form of the Lord appears before someone and the, the person is miserable because of that form. <laughs> the form of the Lord, <laughs> whether Krishna's mm-hmm. hands or Krishna's legs or Krishna's palms, Krishna's lotus feet, Krishna's eyes, they're always a cause of pleasure all the time. Therefore, Krishna's eyes are called Amrita Varshini. Mm. They pour nectar. Krishna's eyes are like clouds. And Krishna's glance is like a rain shower of nectar. Okay, beautiful. So this, is, this is a very interesting point. That every aspect of Krishna's body uh, is only pleasing. It only gives pleasure. Only gives pleasure. And to take this further, Sripad Bilva Mangala Thakur in his Krishna Karanamrit, he says, Madhuram Madhuram Vapurasya Vibho, Madhuram Madhuram Vadanam Madhuram, Madhu Gandhi Mridhu Smita Meta Daho Madhuram 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 Madhuram. And this has been quoted in the Chaitanya Charitamrit by Srila Prabhupada. That the form of Krishna is certainly very sweet. And our Sripad Vallabhachari Ji has written a whole Madhurashtakam mm. describing how everything about Krishna is sweet. And he's not able to uh, stop himself just by saying the lips are sweet, uh, the face is sweet. The eyes are sweet or the smile is sweet. He goes on. He goes on. And at the end of every verse, he says, Madhuradhi Patil Akhilam Madhuram. Oh, oh, everything about him is sweet. And actually, if you see logically speaking, if you say everything is sweet, then it doesn't need elaboration. But this is an outburst of his devotion that even after saying everything about him is sweet, he continues to describe the individual details and still says everything is sweet and still describes the details. And he goes on eight times like that. Mm-hmm. So, Sripad Bilba Mangal Thakur says, everything about Krishna is sweet. Madhuram Madhuram Vapurasya Vipho. The Vapu, the form of Krishna is certainly very sweet. Sorry, just but, to you, if you don't mind. So, I think you are correlating with this, the Sri Musha Drusha. I'm just trying to connect correct. this. Correct. Okay. Yeah, I, I, was, I was trying to say that everything about Krishna is so sweet. Okay. Uh, and in the body of sweetness, 
Shripad Bilba Mangal Thakur says the face is sweeter. Hmm. And on that face, the smile is the sweetest. And the eyes are the sweetest. So the, uh, the, the body is sweet. The face is sweeter and the eyes or the smile are the sweetest. So the gopis here are coming to the description of those eyes by saying the eyes are so beautiful. They are so captivating that we don't even feel like looking at the central portion, the wall of the night blooming lotus found in the Jamuna, which is actually a treat. People go to hill stations, they go to uh, scenic places, they want to take pictures, they want to see lotuses, and they want, if given a chance, they would like to see the world of the lotus, and especially want to speak of a night-blooming lotus flower in the Yamuna, and not just one, a whole family of them. But the gopis are saying that looking at your eyes puts to shame the beauty of the world, the inner part of the night-blooming lotus found in the ponds of Brindav, whether it's the pukur, the small ones like gual pukur, pili pukur, the small pukurs, they are the small ponds in Prindavan. And then we have the little bigger ones, which are called the kund, like Radha kund, Sham kund, Krishna kund, Naval kund, Apsara kund, Indra kund. And little bigger than that are the sarovars, like Man sarovar, Prem sarovar, Pavan sarovar, Kusum sarovar. And then even bigger than that, or wider than that, is the Nadi, the river, which is Yamuna. So Prindavan is filled with water bodies. Ittam sharat swachya jalam. Padmakara Sugandina. That's how even the Venugit begins. Talking about Shukdev Goswami begins with the, the water and the air description of Brindavan. The, the air quality index is being discussed <laughs> of the place. So the water is certainly very beautiful. There are so many ponds in Brindavan. And there are so many beautiful lotuses. Night blooming, blossoming, Kumudini, Kairava lotuses. The blue lotus flowers. And they are and, and they are very beautiful. Here the, the verse describes Sharad Udashaye. The Saptami Vibhakti, which means on or in the water ponds. So the time and the place have been described. The time is the Sharad season and the place is the water. Best season, best situation. Because as Sri Padmadavananda Prabhu also explained, the monsoon is over, which also means all the ponds are filled with water. They are over flooded with water, pure water. And there... Sadhu Jata. Sadhu Jata means well-grown. The lotus flowers have been well-cultivated naturally by Prindadevi. And Sat, not just well-cultivated because sometimes we see parents given good parenting but the kids don't grow well. <laughs> so here Prindadevi as the parent has cultivated the children in the form of the lotus. So the lotus is certainly well-cultivated with good parenting but the lotus is also reciprocated with sat. Sat means beauty. So each petal of the lotus is very beautiful. The color is exquisite. It's eminent. The shape, the size, the fragrance, the texture, the softness, everything is perfect. So the time is perfect. The place is perfect. The upbringing of the lotus is perfect. The individual characteristics of the lotus is perfect. And in that lotus, the central part, which is the wall of the lotus, is indeed so beautiful. Uh, Sarasija Udara. Udara means the navel, the navel part of the lotus, the inner part of the lotus, the heart of the lotus. Shri, the beauty, the opulence of that inner world of the lotus flower, which is so eminent, which is so beautiful, which uh, is well uh, taken care by Brinda Devi, found in the ever flooded water ponds of Brindavan during the autumn season. How beautiful would that be? But Krishna let us be very honest. Just looking at the lotus petals of your eyelids puts to shame the family of night blooming lotuses in Prindam. So this is the uh, this is the first thing I would like to uh, point out at this point. But uh, very eager to hear from Sri Padmanabhananda Prabhu next. That's amazing. You know, there's so much description of the lotus. I used to wonder in the whole Gopi Geet in this particular verse. It's almost half a verse is described is used to describe the lotus itself. So the way you explained it is amazing. So all the description of the beauty of the lotus, of uh, all the factors, basically the time, the place, the cultivation, and the product. So all of it comes together. One of my friends is a very avid gardener, and he enters his flowers into gardening competitions. So it's 
although he may cultivate the whole garden equally well, but it's not that all flowers come out equally well. So the best flowers are put in the gardening contest. So you can, all those four factors come together over here. And then in that, the most beautiful part. It's amazing. So Shri Musha Drusha. What does this, this three compound words mean? Would you like to elaborate? Shri Musha Drusha. Drusha is basically not eyes, it's glance, isn't it? Drushti. So yeah. Shri Musha. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, Shri Musha means that the, your glance steals the beauty. Musha is, I think, steal, isn't it? Steals yes. the beauty, like Mushtika is the thief. That's what I think Madhantra was also referring to earlier about stealing. So the, your glance steals the beauty of all, all this, isn't it? That's what is referring to here. Yes, yes, Prabhuji. Actually, uh, Shri means beauty and Musha means to take away. And Drisha uh, means by the glance. So it's basically Drish is the root word and Drisha. Uh, is the Tritya Vibhakti, which means by, hmm. like Manasa, Vachasa, Karmana, by words, by actions, by the mind. So like that Drisha, by the glance, okay. the opulence is, is stolen. So it's very interesting. The gopis are saying that generally a thief has to get to the place to, thief, to steal. <laughs> but you are such a great thief, you can just point your target and steal it. Without even actually going there. And and look at how protective the lotus is from uh, the, 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 the beauty, which means it's hiding the world by the petals. And the petals are hiding themselves by other lotuses around. And all of this in water. So it's an inaccessible fort with uh, security around. <laughs> so it's in the middle of the forest. So it's inaccessible. And that too, it's not a field lotus. It's a water lotus surrounded by water. So if you don't know to swim, you can't get it. So the water is almost like a security guard. It's like the series of chokidars protecting the family. And the family are lotuses. So they're all standing next to each other. You know, I'm there for you. I'm there for you. And then each of those lotuses is also protecting uh, the wall, which is the treasure, by its own petals. And still, Krishna, even without going close to the water, entering the water, or touching the flower, without even seeing the world, can steal the, the, the beauty, the sweetness of the world, of the lotus, in the family of lotus, in the water pond, during Shara season, in the middle of the forest. How much more are we vulnerable when we come and stand in front of you? You can steal from a distance, and they are in the middle of the forest. They are, you have to go to them. They don't come to you. And still you can go and steal. And we leave our family. Look at those lotuses. They all have, they are sitting with their family. And we gopis have left our family behind. We are individual lotus flowers who have come running, leaving our other lotus flowers behind. And the whirl of the lotus represents our heart. So if you can steal the whirl of the lotus without even going close, without even seeing it, you can steal. So we are completely lost. We have been stolen. We have been, we are vulnerable because individual lotuses in the form of gopis, we have come leaving our family behind. And that too, to find you, who is a thief. And from a distance, if you can steal so much, how much more when we come in front of you? You have stolen the world, which is the heart of the lotus, which is the gopi in the Sharad season, which is the nighttime in the body of water, which is our body, because we know the body is made out of 75, 80% of water anyway. So the transcendental form of the gopis is like a water pond of rasa during the Sharad season. So they're making a direct comparison. Look at us, Krishna. During the Sharad season, our body, Udashayed, which is actually a pond of rasa, and all of us gopis have been well cultivated by our parents. We are not uh, characterless women. We are sadhu jata. And Sat, we are also very beautiful. And we are individual lotuses. And the wall of the lotus is our heart. And you have stolen it with your glance. <laughs> Amazing. Your explanation has stolen our heart now. Madhvandru. <laughs> this, this point about Krishna being a thief is such a very, very deep point. It's brought out repeatedly by our acharyas. And why is it brought out? 
someone can say, well, it's brought out because by hearing about how Krishna is a mukanchor, how he's a great thief, it, it, there's such sweetness in that, and it attracts our heart. But there's a much deeper point. I, to quote a nice verse from Govinda Lilamrita, and, and it, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami gives a very, very beautiful poetic verse. It, there's a reason why he's Kaviraj, the king of the poets. He writes, Gokulai Gokulam Ninye, Gokulam Gokulai Haran, Gokulam Gokula Strinam, Gokulai Gokuleshvaraha. Hmm? <laughs> That Gokulai, the, 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 uh, that personality who's the lord of Gokul, Gokul, he's driving his cows. Huh? At the same time, he's entering Gokul. And at the same time, Gokul means to steal the senses. Go means the senses. He's stealing the senses huh, of the young girls of Gopis. Gokulai Haran, Haran stealing. He's stealing the senses of the, the, uh, of the residents of Gokul, and especially the young girls of Gokul and also the eyes of the people of Gokul. And so the gopis in this verse, they're indirectly choosing Krishna, as Amarandra Prabhu is pointing out, of being a thief. And in particular, what are you stealing? Mm -hmm. your, your, your eyes, they have this amazing beauty. They've stolen that beauty from the petals of the lotus, but your eyes have some extra magic. Mm -hmm. They can steal something, as Amarandra Prabhu was saying, just by looking at it. Right? You just glance at this lotus thing, and in the same way, you've stolen our hearts. Right? You're such a dangerous, dangerous thief. You've stolen everything. You've stolen the, the beauty of the rain cloud, the dance of the peacock. You're such an expert thief. And it's not easy to steal our, our hearts, the gopis are saying, because we're always protected by our relatives, our parents, our brothers, our husbands, our sisters-in-law. We're surrounded by elders who are always protecting us. We're protected by our shyness, our patience, our chastity. But you went straight into our hearts and you captured us. And this is a very important point that, that's being made in, in connection with Krishna being a thief here. And it has to do again with Gauralila, that you entered into our hearts and, and uh, Srila Rupa Goswami uh, what is it? In, in, in Zvitiya uh, Chaitanashtaka, there's a famous verse which is not coming to my mind. Amarinda Prabhu, what is that verse? You, you know what I'm speaking of. How Krishna's he's entered in the hearts of the gopis. It, it'll come to me in a moment. That uh, you entered into our hearts and you captured us, but it's not. Rasastomam Ritva. Rasastomam Ritva, you've entered into our hearts. But it wasn't just you that entered into your hearts. What entered our hearts? It was your eyes. And therefore, there's so much stress on the glance of Krishna. And that glance of Krishna is what leads to Gauralila also. Because it's so famous that Krishna at Rasastoma Ritva, he entered into the hearts of the gopis. And he stole that love that they had because Krishna had this debt. He became a rini. And he said, I don't know how to repay this debt to you. So if you have a big debt, if, if I am a render Prabhu, a, a million dollars US, and I'm very nervous because he's a very angry person. Maybe he's like a mafioso or something. He's going to break my kneecaps or something. I have to repay that debt. <laughs> so the, the first thing I may do is I may go try to borrow money from, from Chaitanya Charan Prabhu. But, but Chaitanya Charan Prabhu, I'm just a brahmachari. I don't have any money that I can borrow, so I, I can't borrow it. So then the next thing is that I go to, to Amarandra Prabhu and I try to get a job. And I say, please let me work for you and I'll work it off. He says, I don't need you. You're useless. <laughs> you don't know anything. How, why will they give you a job? So if, if, I, if I tried to borrow the money to repay my debt, if I tried to... Uh, why are you killing me? <laughs> is, this, is, this, is this not murder? <laughs> Because you, you, are, you are the wealthiest person, therefore I, I'm, I'm, I'm naturally thinking of you. If I try to, to borrow the money to pay off my debt, if I try to get a job to repay my debt, and I'm really worried that Amarinder is going to come with, with that lead pipe and break my kneecaps or something, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm very afraid. I have to repay that debt. What am I going to do? Krishna says no, that I, I always repay my debt. This is his point. I always, so I have to repay that. The only thing left is to become a thief. And therefore, Krishna is so famous. And that thief, he becomes Garanga. When he enters into the heart of the gopis, suddenly something changes. 
and Braj Lila is gone, and the Jamuna is gone, and suddenly it's Nava Dweep, and the Ganga instead of the Jamuna. And when he comes out of the heart of Radha, he sees that his Shama, Shama Varna, Shama Sundar has become Gora Sundar. It's become Gora Lila. So this, this aspect of Krishna being a thief is so very, very important. And how is he stealing here? The gopis are saying, you're doing it with your eyes. It's your eyes which have entered into our hearts and stolen this bath. <laughs> so this very much has to do with Gora Lila. That's my mad thoughts. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> you're such a wealthy person. <laughs> so beautiful, Puruji. So beautiful. Everything that you speak is so beautiful, except that example. <laughs> <laughs> so this is amazing. So what you say? If I just para paraphrase what you said, Madhandru, is that um, that uh, when Lord when Krishna says Napariham, I cannot repay your debt. So he has no ways. So the way he repays is that he thinks actually. I have to go to the gopis only, get some love from them, and then I can offer it back to them. So that's when he enters into their hearts. And when he enters into their hearts, that's when he gets transformed. So in one sense, although normally we don't think of Lord Chaitanya as a thief, it's Krishna who is called as a thief. But you can say Lord Chaitanya is a manifestation of Krishna's thief. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. And that's, that's why it, 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 this, this aspect of a thief is dwelled on so much by the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. It's such an important thing. As I just mentioned, this beautiful verse from Kaviraj Goswami. There's another wonderful verse. I, let me share with you from Krishna Bhavan Amrita, Vishnu Chakrabarti Thakur describes in chapter 7. Um, he says, Mavichedo Rujo, Nubhavakam, Maho Chaita Priyanam, Tash, Tanitva Nija Sangha Eva, Vipinam Yamiti Yate Haro, Ko Nasyad Vishayo Nya. Krishna was thinking, this, this is a description when Krishna is going into the forest. And he's going into the forest and Mother Yashoda is saying, Krishna, I'll go with you. Because who's going to feed you? So I'll go with you. And the boys are like rolling their eyes and looking at Krishna. Please don't let your mother come with us. It's going to spoil everything, right? The boys want to be with Krishna alone. So there's this problem. Not, in a, not only does Mother Yashoda want to come, but all the bridge bossies want to come. Mm. And, and they have this great viche, this viche that they're feeling so very, very sad when Krishna's leaving. So Krishna thinks, Aho Chaita Priyana Matas, let me take their minds along with me. Mm -hmm. But at that time, when Krishna is taking their minds with him, the bridge bossy's eyes, which are also have some personality, the eyes are thinking, what other objects do we have other than Krishna? So the, the, the hearts of the bridge bossies are taken by Krishna. He's stolen their hearts, but he's also stolen their eyes. And their, their eyes are thinking, what else do we have to look at but Krishna? So the eyes also follow him. And so Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur says that in this way, the bridge bossies, they go back to their homes. Eva samskriti vasan mukta pamas te vishan. They're just like liberated souls uh, who are, are maintaining their bodies only by some external custom because, it's, because Krishna has stolen everything from them. So repeatedly, 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 our acharyas are stressed. And so, so many literatures, how Krishna's a thief. And we can see this is the Bhagavatam mentions anvaya vyati reka vyam yat syat sarvata sarvada. There's two ways to approach the Bhagavatam. There's two aspects that the Bhagavatam is giving us directly and indirectly. So do, we can understand the writings of our Goswamis in a direct way, but there's an indirect mood too. And one thing I, I think is very, that I like to look at when I read the, the writings of our Goswamis, I try to look for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because they're, they're scarred. It, you meet someone who was a prisoner of war in the Vietnam War, and, and they were being tortured by the Vietnamese or something. They came out just skin and bones. They'll never be able to forget what they went through for the rest of their life. So in a similar way, how is it possible 
the Rupa Goswami, the Sanatana Goswami, the Krishna Das Kabir Goswami, these other great devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who, who have seen Mahaprabhu or, or, or heard about him directly from Raghunath Das Goswami and other devotees, how could they ever forget about that? It, it must have made such a deep impression on their heart. But so many times they're not directly speaking about Garanga Mahaprabhu. But Anvaya Vyati Reka Byam Yat Syat Sarvat if we look with a special magnifying glass, then we can see directly or indirectly, actually everything is about Garanga Mahaprabhu. It, it's all their writings. Krishna Das Kaibraj Goswami is given Govinda Lilamrita, and we think, oh my God, this is something very erotic and very, very but he's done it to please Garanga Mahaprabhu directly and indirectly, he's given it to help us understand the mood of Garanga Mahaprabhu. So repeatedly our acharyas have stressed this aspect of Krishna as being a chore, as being a thief for these reasons. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm talking so much, I get a little passionate about this. Please forgive me. So transcendently passionate. Beautiful. Yeah, so, ch so Chauragra and Nyashtakam is not just like a one-off uh, poetic composition. It's actually representing a very very key feature of our theology and how God is the thief. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, in the Christian tradition, they have the idea, I think I forget the word, that God can do no wrong. And in that sense, God, God can never do anything immoral. And that's considered one of their virtues, one of his defining virtues. And that is definitely true. But at one level, you know, we have immoral, we have moral, and then we have transmoral, we can say, transcendental morality. So Krishna's stealing is completely transcendental. Yes, true. So this is Musha. He's stealing. So we all can pray that Krishna steals our hearts also one day. Thank you, Madhavan Andrew. Amar you want to steal our hearts further? Uh, <laughs> actually, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, uh, as Sripad Madhavan Prabhu was explaining, he describes Krishna's eyes very beautifully. He says, Atyayate su vipule masrane sushone su snigdha pina ghana chanchala pakshmaramye tarunya sara mada ghurnana mantarecha netre hare mama ridhi spuratam sadati. Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami has given the uh, descriptions, the descriptive adjectives to describe Krishna's eyes. He says, Atyayate su vipule. They are broad. Krishna's eyes are broad and they are wide. They go from the end almost to the ear. So they are vipule, they are very long, yet at the same time atyayate, they are very wide. And mastrane sushone, they have a reddish tinge to their Krishna's eyes is reddish. And at the same time, um, it is moist, moist with affection, moist with compassion, moist with emotions. And susnik dhapi pina ghana chanchala pakshmaramye. He says, Krishna has big eyelids, blackish eyelids, um, um, bla blackish eyeballs, and very thick, sweet, attractive eyelids with well-shaped eyelashes. <laughs> and to add more fun, he says, these eyes are filled, tarunya sara, they are filled with youth, and madha ghurnita mantareja, they are always intoxicated, therefore like a khanjan pakshi. Which Shila Rupa Goswami also quotes in the Stavamala, Krishna's eyes, Yamalarjuna Banjita Ashrita Khanjita. He says Krishna's eyes are like the Khanjan Pakshi, very restless, always moving left, right, left to right, left to right, because Krishna doesn't see straight. He's always looking the edge of his sidelong glance. So wide, broad, moist, reddish, affectionate, restless, eyelids are thick, eyelashes are curled filled with youth, filled with intoxication. And he says, what else can I say? Netre harer mamaridhis puratam sadate. I can only pray that may these two eyes of Krishna hmm, always be manifest in the core of my heart. So it's interesting. Here he uses the, the dual usage. Netram netre netrani. So netram netre, two eyes. Kaviraj Goswami is saying, netre harer mamaridhis puratam sadate. May the two eyes of Krishna get manifest, right? Generally, when you speak about the eyes, you speak two eyes, ears, two ears, hands, two hands, feet, two feet. But interestingly, here the gopis, when they say Trisha, it is used in singular. The eye of Krishna. They're not saying the eyes of Krishna. 
because in english you have the singular tense the singular uh, mm. uh, count and then you have the plural more than one but in sanskrit you have one eka vachana bahu uh, dvi vachana and bahu vachana you have one two and more than two so ice could have either been grammatically described with the dual usage like kaviraj goswami is used here two eyes but the gopis are saying drisha which means by the eye not the eyes technically grammatically hmm. so now our acharyas have got into the the scene they are uh, you know they are like the investigating officers right we were mentioning about this that every words of shrimad bhagavatam is a crime scene so stealing is a crime is it not it's a it's it's a serious crime so every scene of the bhagavatam uh, <laughs> you see is a crime scene so what the acharyas do is they first of all seal the the crime scene the investigation officers the acharyas go inside and they try to investigate every strand of hair which means every syllable of the words and our acharyas have got into the scene to say why are the gopis using the singular case krishna with his eye one eye glance has stolen the beauty of the lotus why not two so shripad sanatan goswami in his brihad vaishnava toshani he writes very beautifully he says that well krishna's eyes are so beautiful that you if one eye can do so much damage imagine what he can do with two <laughs> one eye is such a big thief with one eye he can steal so much beauty imagine if both his eyes come to the scene what damage they can do they can steal the heart the mind the senses the pran even make the person die even so with one eye he's stealing and with two eyes he can even kill right so that's one or another meaning could be we see our eyes when they move the eyes are separated but they always move together there's very good unity between the two so it's almost like saying yes the gopis mean both eyes but both eyes are saying the same thing they are asking for the gopis affection so it's just one thing which is being conveyed by both those eyes so you don't have to use the dual case the purpose of both those eyes is the same to beg for the affection of the gopis hmm? so that is with respect to the stealing also we can see shila jiva goswami in his commentary has said some things uh, regarding the stealing i was very interested to know more about this the stealing process of krishna so i looked into some other texts as well and then um, <laughs> it was described that there are some characteristics of a thief first of all Uh, the thief doesn't calculate the loss of the victim mm. a person could cannot be a good thief if he starts thinking for my profit there will be so much loss for the victim he doesn't think he doesn't care about the loss of the victim it could be loss of life even but all that he thinks about is his gain so the first thing about a good thief is he doesn't calculate the loss of the victim the second thing is he knows where the wealth is however the lotus may try to hide its wealth the thief knows the thief exactly knows where the closet is he knows where the wealth is he knows where the cash is he knows where the ornaments are so a good thief first of all doesn't calculate the loss of the victim second he knows where people keep their wealth third he doesn't feel guilty he doesn't feel guilty about his stealing he doesn't go and apologize to the victim sorry you know i i have to do what i have to do this is just my job uh, everybody has to work for their belly this is my job he doesn't do that so first he doesn't calculate the loss of the victim second he knows where the victim is keeping their wealth third he doesn't feel guilty about his act fourth he doesn't stop at stealing from one place he can steal from multiple places every night and fifth for the success in stealing he can even kill he can even kill so the gopis have analyzed that you are not calculating the loss that we are going through you exactly know where our wealth is that is our heart our senses our mind you don't even feel guilty about stealing you don't come out and apologize and not just stealing from one place you're stealing from all the gopis from multiple sources so the only thing is missing that is killing so why don't you just come and complete your your theft Uh, by killing you have taken everything from us you have all the characteristics so why don't you just come and uh, come and kill us and also we can see that you could have categories of thieves as well you could have like a robin hood thief 
<laughs> who steals from others and gives it, you know, to the sadhus or let's say to those who need it. That's the like, th that's one category of thief. But no does wealthy. Krishna do that? No, he's not in that category. Now, again, I'm talking from the side of the gopis um, who are in uh, Vamibha. That uh, Krishna is, uh, so point number one, you could have a thief who's stealing from, you know, those who have it and, and gives it to those who need it, gives it to the sadhus. That's first class. So he doesn't keep anything for himself. He takes it from those who are rich and gives it to the sadhus and those who need it. Second class thief would be those who steals it. He's the one who steals it. Uh, gives a gives a portion of that to the sadhus and then he keeps a portion for himself. That's the second class. Third class, he steals it, doesn't give anything to the sadhus and keeps all for himself. So first class, he steals from people who have it and gives it to the sadhus. Second class, he steals it from people who have it, gives a portion to the sadhus, keeps a portion for himself. Third class, he steals it from people who have it and doesn't give anything to the sadhus and keeps everything for himself. And the fourth class, is that thief who steals from the sadhus. <laughs> oh God. So the gopis are saying, what kind of thief are you? You are the fourth class. You're not stealing from anyone. You're stealing from the sadhus. That is us. And, if, and, and to say that, very poetically, they are saying you're stealing the world, the beauty of the world of the lotus. Because if you see, uh, the, the lotus is a sadhu. That's the, that, therefore, a, a pun has been used in the words by saying sadhu jata sat. <laughs> sadhu means good, but sadhu also means a saintly person. So the lotus is considered to be saintly. And that this is why we equate that to Lakshmi Devi. Padmalankrita pani pallava yugam padmasanastham shriyam vatsalyadi gunojvalam bhagavati vande jagan mataram. Lakshmi has been compared to the lotus. Her hands are lotus, her feet are lotus. She holds a lotus. She wears garlands of lotus. Sits in a lotus pose on a lotus. Right? So lotus is considered to be very saintly. And if you can steal the beauty from the sadhu, from the lotus, our situation is like that. Because we are saintly. And you have stolen from the sadhu. So putting the characteristics of the thief together, uh, you don't think about the loss of the victim. You know, you know where the wealth is. You don't feel guilty. You don't apologize. You steal from multiple uh, places. Uh, you don't steal and share it to the sadhus. You steal from the sadhus. So the only thing is left to complete your checklist is murder. So why don't you just do it? Oh God, amazing. If Prabhupada said that you know, if Krishna is the best in everything, then Krishna can be the best thief. It's a complete robbery. Nothing is left. <laughs> Amazing. Adantru, you want to add something? Yeah, I was just uh, drinking in with my ears the nectar coming out of uh, out of uh, Amarendra Prabhu's mouth. Thank you very much. So sweet. I, I was thinking about this. Uh, you, you made me think about Krishna's restless eyes and how Radharani is also. In fact, Radharani, we know she has 25 different uh, qualities. And one of them is Chala Upanga that she has very bright and very restless eyes. Radharani's glance is always restless. And I was thinking, why is Radharani's glance restless? Krishna's glance restless? And I had some thoughts I just wanted to share. You can see what you think of these thoughts. Krishna's crooked. My grandma used to say he's crooked in three different places. And because Radharani, she's always looking to Krishna, then her eyes are also, they're crooked. She, she has a crooked glance. But then why is Krishna's glance crooked? Because Radharani is very straight. Radharani's love is very crooked because she's Bhamya. Bhamya Bhav, she's leftist. And because Krishna's always looking for that love of Radha, he's completely controlled by the love of Radha. His glance is also crooked. A any further thoughts from either of you why Krishna's glance is crooked? Radharani's glance is crooked? What do you think of that? Does that, that sound okay, my, my thought? It's amazing. Yes, Amandru. Yeah. Actually, there is a verse in the fourth chapter of Adilila Chaitanya Charitamrit, uh, which has been quoted by Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, which says that Radharani is actually a bundle of contradictions. <laughs> her love is the highest, but yet she is the most humble. Her love is unlimited, and yet it continues to expand forever. Hmm? 
Vibhu, vibhuma pi gaurava charya vihina. Kaviraj Goswami says, so she is like the bundle of transcendental contradiction. She is the highest, but put her, puts herself as the lowest. She is unlimited, yet she thinks she has no love. Premera swabhava e premera sambandha. Nahi Krishna premer, um, nahi prema gandha. Kaviraj Goswami says, Mahaprabhu said, I don't even have a scent of that love. So that's Radha Bhav. So because Radharani is like an ocean, constantly moving. So Krishna's eyes are also constantly moving, seeing the ocean of Radha's love. And uh, Srila Prabodhananda <laughs> Saraswati has said, Vaidagya Sindhu Anuraga Rasaika Sindhu, Vatsalya Sindhu Atisandra Kripaika Sindhu, Lavanya Sindhu Amrita Chavi Rupa Sindhu, Sri Radhika Spuratume Ridhikeli Sindhu. That Radharani is actually, uh, Agastya Muni could drink the seven oceans. But even Krishna cannot drink the seven oceans of Radha's characteristics. <laughs> he says, Why that this Hindu? She, first, she is the ocean of cleverness and skill. And second, Why that this Hindu? Anuragana Saika Sindhu. She is the ocean of Anuragrasa, which means Krishna Prema Rasa, the liqui liquefied form of Krishna Prem. And third, Vatsalya Sindhu. She is the ocean of affection, compassion. And Atisandra Kripaika Sindhu. And she has unlimited mercy and magnanimity for fallen conditioned souls. And we can see in the pastime of Shivakuri, where the jackal gets stuck in the pit in Radha Kund and Radharani's heart melts. And fifth, Lavanya Sindhu. She is the ocean of beauty. And Amrita Chavirupa Sindhu. From the ocean of milk came Lakshmi. But from the ocean of Prem comes Radha. Sri Radhika Spuratume Ridikeli Sindhu. And uh, she is also the ocean of very beautiful Madhurya, my sweet Brajalilas. So, O Radha, O Radharani, my heart is actually the ocean of salt water, the salt water of Anarthas. But you are uh, the embodiment of seven oceans of bliss. So, why don't you give a portion of that sweet water in my heart, this portion of your mercy, and make this pond as your. This, this ocean, dirty water ocean, as your bathing pond by residing here. So it is true. The word used is Sindhu, which means it's constantly moving with waves and tides and uh, movements. And because Krishna has to keep up with these seven oceans, his eyes are always restless. So I, I completely agree to that, that description. It's amazing. Krishna <laughs> is endlessly drinking. You know, it's interesting. Before I was introduced to Bhakti, I had read one spiritual book. It is, a, it is an interesting book, not a, from a parampara. It says, how do you know a saintly person? It says, their eyes are very calm. This is in the material world, a person who is driven by various desires, their eyes become very restless. But a saintly person's eyes are very calm. So we could say that it's, it's like there is worldly passion. And then as we move forward, there's dispassion. In the world, we are restless for sense gratification. So the mi mind is chanchala because it is uncontrolled. That's why the eyes are restless. Then as we become purified, we come to the sattva, should, sattva level, then it becomes pacified. But then when we go further, it becomes transcendently agitated. This transcendental restlessness. So both Krishna and Radharani, they are having their divine, you could say divine love affair. And in that both of them are kept constantly restless. So, so beautiful, project. So beautiful. I, I, I really love this point where you said that in passion, the eyes are restless. And then they come to a point of tranquility and serenity. And then it gets transcendently restless again. So beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. So this is a drop of beauty of what you're sharing. That's amazing. I was thinking that maybe many of the verses which you are discussing, many of the beautiful verses, uh, especially those which we are reciting, maybe you could later give the references and we could put the references in the link below. Those who want to go back, if, if they are available in Medabase or online somewhere or in some books, the devotees can refer to it. Now, many of these verses are especially, there is a verse about Radharani's eyes and uh, these are all worth memorizing and cherishing. They are like treasures. Hmm? It's amazing. I am seven oceans of Radharani's love. Wow. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm, I'm yeah. simply standing on the shore of the ocean of uh, so much nectar that both of you are sharing. Sri Pad Madhavananda Prabhu was the one who agitated the ocean of thought. <laughs> you brought up the idea of Krishna's crook, his, his crooked glance. Such a, and such an important thing. And Jagannath Ashtakam also begins with the glance of the Lord. And it speaks about the glance of the gopis. That, that glance is so important. Radha Kripa Kataksha Stava Raj Krishna. We, we have these prayers, very, very important prayers about the glance of the Lord and his devotees. Mm. The glance will come. Also, yeah, go ahead. The glance will come again later in the Gopi Gita also. It comes repeatedly. Prahasitam Priya Prema Vikshanam. So again and again, this glance will keep coming. So it's beautiful. Yes, Prabhu, continue. Yeah, I was also thinking that um, uh, Krishna's eyes or Krishna's glance uh, could also be uh, maybe meditated upon in a different relatable uh, manner in this world. Like we can see that Krishna's eyes have the power to create, maintain and destroy. Wow. All three. <laughs> so, <laughs> Saha Aikshita, isn't it? Saha Aikshita. Saha Aikshita exactly. Yeah. Go ahead, please. Yeah. We, we, we see in the Upanishad, Taitanya Upanishad, Sa Aikshata. The sages are asking the question, how did the universe come about? And then the answer given is Sa Aikshata. He glanced. Okay. Very wonderful answer. Let's move on. So they are convinced that Krishna glanced, Vishnu glanced, and the universe began. So he can, <laughs> so, so he can create through glance. That, that's understood. But he can also maintain through glance because we see Yachakshur Esha Savita Sakala Grahanam Raja Samasta Sura Murti Rashesha Teja Yasya Jnaya Brahmati Sambhrita Kala Chakra Govindam Adi Purusham Tamaham Bhaja. In the Brahma Samhita, it's described that Krishna's eyes are like the sun and the moon. And we know that the whole universe, the whole Brahmanda, uh, moves on by the sun and the moon. The moon adds taste. By its moonbeams, by the Prem Bhakti Chandrika, we could say. <laughs> Just a pun mm. there to Narottam Das Thakur's work. <laughs> but the, moon, the soothing moonbeams from the moon, they nourish the crops and add in taste. And at the same time, we see that the sun is the one who, through its Urja Shakti, Ashesha Teja, by unlimited strength and potency, without any deterioration, the sun and the moon, they maintain the whole cosmos. Not just... Uh, on a macroscopic level, in, even on a microscopic level, even every individual needs vitamin D. So the sun nourishes and maintains every living being, yet at the same time, the whole creation. So Krishna, through his glancing, can create as Mahavishnu. And through his glance, he can maintain as the sun and the moon. And he can also destroy. It's an interesting point. We see in the pastime of Kaliya, where the poisonous water was in the body, of the friends and Krishna book clearly Prabhupada explains that how did Krishna revive his friends? He glanced on them. So Krishna's eyes have the power to destroy the poisonous effect of Kaliya's poison found in the Yamuna pond, the, the Kaliya Rid, which was drunk by the friends. So he can create as Mahavishnu. He can maintain through his eyes as the sun and the moon and he can also destroy the poison in the body of uh, the friends who drink the poison. And also we see in the pastime of Putana. I heard this from my Guru Maharaj. Very wonderful uh, explanation that uh, when, Krishna, when Putana saw Krishna, Krishna closed his eyes. And one of the reasons was Krishna was thinking, if I glance on Putana, either through my anger, I will kill her. Or through my compassion, I will uplift her. Either way, I will not let her do her service. So Krishna is thinking here through my glance, either I will kill her, which means destruction, or I will uplift her, which is maintenance or higher spiritual success. So we see that Krishna can destroy the, the ill effects of Putana's poison in her body or the ill effects of the poison coming from Kaliya's poison. So he can destroy, he can maintain as the sun and moon, and he can also create the universes. So the question that we can ask ourselves, is when Krishna can do these three things, why can't he do that with us? When he can create universes, can't Krishna create, playing with the word create, when Krishna can create the universe, why can't he create our good fortune by glancing on us as the deity? 
प्रतिमा नाही तुम्ही साक्षात ब्रजेंद्र नंदन श्रीमन महाप्रभु लुक द डीटी एन सेड यू आर नॉट प्रतिमा यू आर नॉट अ रिप्रेजेंटेशन यू आर साक्षात ब्रजेंद्र नंदन सो द डीटी इज कृष्ण सो वेन वी टेक दर्शन वी आर नॉट द सीयर वी आर द सीन एंड कृष्ण इज द सीयर लाइक वेन वी से डिड यू सी द डॉक्टर दैट डजन मीन डिड यू गो एंड सी द डॉक्टर डिड यू लेट हिम सी यू right that's that's the expression we say did you see the doctor well, that means did you let the doctor see you so similarly did you see the deities which means did you let the deities glance on you which means if krishna can create good fortune uh, krishna can create universes why can the deity who is krishna by glancing on his devotees create good fortune churn the heart with spiritual desires and why can't he maintain if he can maintain the universe why can't he maintain our spiritual life and if he can destroy the poison in the body of the friends and the body of putana why can't he destroy the poison of lust and anger and greed in my heart kala kali balina indriya vairi varga shri bhakti marga ih kanthaka koti ruddha ha ha koyami vikala kim haram karomi chaitanya chandra yadi nadhya kripam karoshi prabodhananda saraswati nis chaitanya chandramritam has said that my lord apart from you there is nobody who can destroy these ill effects in my heart so he can create universes so he can create good fortune he can maintain universes so he can maintain my spiritual life he can destroy poison so he can destroy my anarthas my lord why don't you glance on me is the same prayer in the sadhaka avastha as much as the prayer in the siddha avastha of the gopis from the practitioner stage to the perfectional perfection stage the same principle my lord why don't you glance on me beautiful meditation eh? amazing you know, i think when you think of the glances talking about the glances i remember two verses in in bishma's prayers he is saying that parasainikayur akshna rutavati pratirastu he says that that my dear lord that he is saying krishna what do you do parasainikayur akshna rutavati partha sakhe ratirastu atir mamastu so the life spans of the opposing enemies you destroy stole away just by the glance so he can destroy uh, even the enemies of a devotee whether they are internal enemies like the anarthas or external enemies that might be there they can be destroyed by krishna and i think in the fourth canto there's the verse that bruman that hasam hare ravanta akhil loka tivra the first part of that verse is that how the eyebrows of the lord they agitate normally the sages don't get agitated by anything worldly but the eyebrows agitate the sages in that sense they become transcendently attracted to the lord and thus they become free from worldly agitation just like the kumaras they got attracted by the tasya ravind makran tasya ravind nayanasti makra so that was about how they the the the, the tulsi of the lotus feet of the lord attracted them although they were situated in personal meditation so it's an amazing meditation to consider how what all the lord's glance can do in ram leela the lord's glance is ready to evaporate the whole ocean and in samudra dev has to come out and beg for mercy so like that even if there are ocean of anarthas in our hearts the lord's lord's glance can can free us from all that it's true amazing Drusha, I. This is such an important point. It, our purpose, Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, famously said that we should not try to see the Lord; rather, we should act in such a way the Lord will see us. And that's the meaning of darshan. And many times we think it, it, we're going to have daily darshan. Somebody sends us an email with a picture. That's not necessarily darshan, and, and the word necessarily is a subtle point. uh it may be darshan but we're not seeing it's not that i come before the deity and i check him out and say yeah i approve the pujari did a good job he's he's got my approval that's not darshan and, and therefore shila bhakta siddhanta comment to that that in jagannath puri this is why mahaprabhu stayed by the garuda stamba and, and when we speak about the jagannath puri university of braj prem The first classroom is the Jagannath Mandir, and one of the lessons in that classroom is darshan. What is darshan? 
And when Mahaprabhu first went, he ran to embrace Jagannath. But after that, he would always stay back by Garuda. And there's an internal and an external purpose for that. The internal purpose is by that Garuda Stamba. I don't know. I'm a Bideshi. I can't have Darshan. All I know to say in Odi is Bideshi Prabhashni Shade. But uh, by standing next to that, <laughs> Odi Hindi Bengali, by standing next to that Garuda Stamba, he could see Jagannath, but he, wouldn't, he wasn't able to see Ra, uh, uh, Subhadra and Balaram because Mahaprabhu was in the mood of Radha. So that's his internal purpose. But externally, his purpose was to teach us the meaning of darshan, that I'm not the seer, but I should act in a way that the Lord will see me. And therefore, he stood by Garuda and his Dainyabhav, thinking that why will Jagannath want to see me, but let me stand next to Garuda. Garuda is a great devotee, and certainly Jagannath will look at him, and then maybe he'll see me also. In a similar way, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta said, this is what we do for Parikrama. When we go on Parikrama, it's not that we, we go there to buy a T-shirt or to take some photos. We go with Gurudev. And he says that when we're going, we shouldn't be so concerned looking at the place at Radhakund or this tree or that mountain, but we should be looking to Gurudev to see what is Gurudev seeing. And that's really what it means to go on Parikrama. So this glance is such a very, very important aspect of our philosophy. And I, I, again, it's a subtle thing. We think that, that we're the seer. when we're Actually, we're, we're meant to be seen. We're thinking even deity darshan, we're sending aside. And, and it's a good preaching thing. I don't mean to, to fault it. That this is the daily darshan of these deities. But is that really darshan? There's, the deity can manifest, the Lord can manifest in, in wood and stone in the mind and sand, different ways. But how does he manifest? What does it mean when he's manifest? When we go to Lloyd Bazaar and there's a thousand deities in a shop, do we offer obeisances to every deity? No, because we don't have the idea that they're, they're installed. And what does that installation, that pranapatista mean? The pranapatista simply means someone is worshiping the Lord. And the Lord appears then when there's some love, some worship from the devotee. So I, I, we may get a picture, and this is a daily darshan, and I say it doesn't necessarily mean this darshan. It may be darshan. How many devotees offer obeisances when that picture comes on their computer screen? How many of us offer prayers? How many of us offer incense, offer some worship? That's darshan, and Krishna becomes pleased by that. But just to see the Lord from my pleasure, that's really cool. I really like that red outfit with the lotuses. Wow, that's just really far out. That's not darshan. That, that's not the whole Gaudiya mood as we started in the beginning of the session to describe. Beautiful. That Garuda Stamba is amazing. The Lord will see me because I'm next to him. Next to Garuda. So in some ways, the it's if we offer our prayers at one level, we it's good for us to express our heart and offer prayers. But uh, it said that when we offer the prayers offered by offered by great devotees, then the law we remind the Lord of that great devotee, and the Lord becomes pleased by that. And because it is we who are reminding him, he becomes pleased with us also. So that's we get we get the good fortune incidentally. <laughs> 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 yes. Mm -hmm. So we. I'm. Yeah. I'm reminded in the Krishna Leela Stava, Srila Sanatan Goswami writes a very beautiful words glorifying Krishna, but in a way that Krishna will really hear his prayers. Now Srila Sanatan Goswami's prayers are always heard because Bhakti Vinod Thakur <laughs> says, "Shadanga Sharana Gati Hoi Be Jahar Tahara Prarthana Shune Shinanda Kumar." That Krishna will listen to the prayers of those who are surrendered. So Srila Sanatan Goswami's prayers are always heard. But as we know, he's always so humble. More na chuni ya prabhu padatumar pai. Mahaprabhu, please don't touch me. I am very fallen. Ke ami ke ne amar jari tapatroi. Iha nahi jani prabhu ke mane hi to hoi. I don't even know who I am. You know. Dainyar na ve ni magnoham. He's, he's drowning in the ocean of humility. So therefore, he feels his prayers will not be heard. So he writes a verse glorifying Krishna, but filled with the names of Radha, because he knows Krishna will listen to the name Radha. 
<laughs> so he says, Radha Radhit Radhesh Radhika Prana Vallabha Radha Ramana Vanditvam Radhika Prema Nirjita. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm reminded of this because Sri Pan Madhavananda Prabhu was mentioning how by standing next to Gaura, Sriman Mahaprabhu in his humility feels that now Jagannath will glance on me. So mm -hmm. he may not glance on me otherwise, but Garuda is such a great devotee. If I stand next to him, he will glance. So similarly, Srila Sanatan Goswami is writing that maybe Krishna may not listen to my prayers. But if I say Radha, 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 then he will, <laughs> he will be interested. Because it is described um, in the Brahma Vaivartha Puran, Krishna has said that Ra Ucharana Matrena. If someone says Ra, Yami Shravana Lobhata, then I will come with a lot of eagerness to see what's the next syllable. He has almost said 50% right. I hope he gets it right. So Ra, Uch, Ra Shabdo Charana Matrena, just by saying Ra, Yami Shravana Lobhata, I will come with a lot of eagerness. And Dha Ucharanam Paschad, if he completes that with Dha, then Dadami Bhakti Muttama, then I will give the highest bhakti to that person. So Srila Sanatan Goswami in that mood, he has written Radha Radhita, that he who is worshipped by Radha. So the first phrase is that Krishna who is worshipped by Radha. Radha Radhita, Radhesha, he who is the Lord of Radha, Radhika Pranavallava, he who is the master of the life air of Radha, Radha Ramana, he who is the eternal beloved of Radha, Vande Tvam, I, was, I bow down to you. Radhika Prema Nirjita, he who's completely conquered and defeated by the love of Radharani. So in that same mood, we see Srila Sanatan Goswami following the footsteps of Mahaprabhu is standing next to not the Garuda Stamba, but the Radha Stamba, Radha Nam Stamba. And he's offering his Krishna Leela Stamba to Jagannath or Krishna. So it was just an add uh, addition, uh, just a point. Hmm. Amazing. Madhantru, you want to... Say something? Yeah, I, I I keep thinking I'd like to go to the verse, but you guys are saying so many nectar things. I just want to give some reflections on what you're saying. And and for me, what Amarendra Prabhu was just saying now is so extremely important. I, when I first met my Guru Maharaj, I, I came a little close to him, and uh, it was in Seattle, Washington, 1993. And he quoted a verse from Chaitanya Bhagavad, spoken by Mahaprabhu at that time. Jadi ama prati sneha taki sabakar prati tabi krishna vyati rikta nagai bayar. And Mahaprabhu says, Jadi ama prati sneha, if you love me, then you follow my instructions. And my Guru Maharaj is looking at me and said, If you love me, you follow my instructions. And what is my instruction? What is the instruction of Mahaprabhu? Don't chant my name, chant Krishna's name. And, I, and this Amarendra Prabhu's comments have brought this out. And many times we, we think about these beautiful verses from, Brim, from uh, Brahma Vivarata Purana, and there's a few other different literatures also. Rashabdam Kuvate, Trashudadhami, Bhakti Mutam. Krishna says, as soon as I hear the first syllable Ra from someone's lips and I give them Bhakti, and the next moment I hear the syllable Da, I become stunned. I can't move. It's so wonderful hearing the name of Radha. So sometimes some devotees, they say, well, this should be our bhajan. We should chant the name of Radha. Or even, I, I know one devotee says, I have a better system, better than what Srila Prabhupada gave. I have a better system than Nityananda Prabhu gave. I have a better system than what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave. They gave Krishna Nam, but I say you should chant Gora Nam or Nityananda Nam because it's more merciful. And there's so many reasons and so many supports you can give to support that. That's okay. Once I heard a story, I, I don't know if this is historically accurate, but the principle I, I, is definitely accurate. I appreciate it. I've heard that some disciples of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta once approached him at Radhakund and said, Guru Maharaj, you have one disciple here. He's become so advanced. He stopped chanting the name of Krishna. And now he's just chanting Radhe, Radhe, Radhe. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta apparently quoted one of these verses from Brahma Vivarta Purana and said, yes, you know, if you chant the name of Radha, what you get, Krishna will personally come running. It's so great. But then he said, but we have a better program. <laughs> we chant the name Krishna and someone else comes running. <laughs> and that other person is Radha. 
And that's why our in our kirtan, in the kirtan of our sampradaya, we stress the name of Krishna. We also chant the name of Radha. We also chant the name of Gora. We also chant the name of Gurudev, sometimes with great pleasure. But our system, when we get initiated, we're initiated into the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, not into the name of Nityananda, not in the name of Garanga. And it's not that our acharyas didn't understand something, but someone now has some better idea or something. But we should be very, very careful. We should understand that we have the best program is not to chant the name of Rad or even to chant the name of Nittai, but better than that is to chant the name of Krishna and thereby please Radha and thereby please Nityananda Prabhu. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this is such an important point. Too. Sometimes we become, we, then we, we very easily condemn material calculativeness that you'll go do this and go to heaven and things like that. But sometimes we become quite spiritually calculative. Like now Karthik is coming and you want to say, that, oh, if I do some bhakti, I'll get thousand times more benefit. And I mean, it's at, at one level, yena kena prakar in that is true. Right? So the, the same Bhakti Sama Sindhu has both these things. Yena kena prakar in it also says, and then also says, Anya bilashita shunyam. So if somehow or the others, if, oh, hearing that in Karthik, I can get so much benefits, I practice bhakti. That's also good, but that's at a preliminary level. At a higher level, we, we intensify our bhakti during Kartik, not because we will get more benefits, but because we can please Krishna more. Like the Adarani's month, so we can please her more. And so this, this higher motive is, uh, is actually, in one sense, the essence of our sampradaya. That we do everything, we offer ourselves to Krishna completely. And that's love and separation. In one sense, the devotee is getting nothing. Offering oneself to Krishna and the devotee gets nothing, but still the devotee offers everything to Krishna. So, Amarindra, we want to say something? Yeah, please. Sure, sure, Prabhuji. Actually, Sripad Madhavananda Prabhu was mentioning about how uh, we chant the name of Krishna to attract the heart of Radharani. Uh, we see that um, um, Srimati Shrima, Radharani uh, has said that Radha, Radha, Ma Vada, Krishna, Krishna Vada. When the parrot sat on her, the Vama Hasta Stita Shuka, when the parrot sat on the left hand of Radharani and said, Radha, Radha, Radharani said, Radha, Radha, Mavada. Don't say Radha, Radha. Krishna, Krishna, Vada. Chant the name of Krishna. That pleases my heart. That pleases my ears by chanting the name of Krishna. So the meditation could be chanting Radharani's name is for the pleasure of Krishna. And chanting Krishna's name is for the pleasure of Radharani. And therefore, in the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, Jaya Jaya Radha Krishna. Yugalam Milan, Arati Korove Lalit Adi Sakhi. That we want to bring, just like eternally the gopis bring Radha and Krishna together in the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, we want to bring Radha and Krishna, who are not different from their names, together in the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. And of course, if we desire to chant the name of Radharani, we, we have uh, uh, the song of uh, Srila Gorki Shordas Babaji Maharaj, Kothai Go Prema Mai Radhe Radhe. That could be chanted because it's in Anugatya. Uh, but apart from that, we have the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. And Srila Prabhupada said uh, that includes everything. So, There's a beautiful line in Prem Bhakti Chandrika, where Nartam Das Thakur sings, Krishna Nama Gane Bada Dika Charan Pai Radha Nama Gane Krishna Chandra Sangshepi kahi lakata gucha hamane ravyata duka moya anya katadvandva. He says, My dear Bai, my dear brother, Krishna Namagani, by chanting Krishna's name, I'm going to get Radha, Radha, and then Radha Namagani Krishna Chandra. By chanting Radha's name, I'm going to get Krishna. And so we, we chant this Hare Krishna mantra in this way with this meditation. Dina Radha Prasadina, Krishna says this himself. Dina Radha Prasadina, huh? or this is, excuse me, this is Jan Chandra Goswami saying this in his Padidi. Dina Radha Prasadina, without getting the Prasad, the, the mercy of Radha, Krishna prapped in the Jayate. We can't get Krishna. And this, this is the point that Ayendra Prabhu is making. Tatashi Radhika Krishna Smarani Yosusam Yuto. And therefore, we always keep Radha and Krishna together. That's our, that's our mood in chanting this Hare Krishna Mahamantra. 
And it, it causes personally so much pain to me in my heart when I hear people directly or indirectly implying that they have a better bhajan pranali than Srila Prabhupada, or better, better bhajan pranali than our Gaudiya Vaishnava Acharyas, or better than even the Mahaprabhu or Nityananda Prabhu themselves, indirectly indicating that I'm, I'm, I'm a great personality, I'm greater than all these personalities. I have something new, we're going to chant Goranam. We should chant Goranam with great happiness and Nityanam in the name of our Gurudev, but we have a better program than that. And a better program than that is chanting Krishna's name and thereby pleasing Gurudev, pleasing Nityananda, pleasing Garanga Mahaprabhu, pleasing Radharani. Uh, that's my, my thoughts about this. It's amazing. Yeah, so sometimes these uh, specific verses about specific glories can make, up a little, make us, I was saying, spiritually calculative. And ultimately, it's not a matter of calculation, it's a matter of relationship, of reciprocation of devotion of offering ourselves to the lord so it's a very important point to keep in mind yeah you know prabhupada was quite uh, prabhupada inverted traditional hierarchies at times so for example i think when some of prabhupada's disciples when they came to india and when they i think it was one of the raja temples and the pujari said oh you are such a nice devotee if you continue bhakti like this in a future life you will become a pujari in the temple here and they came in so so far. <laughs> and Prabhupada said, tell that, you know, if they do their worship nicely, they will be they will become preachers in our moment in the future. So, <laughs> so the idea is not that Prabhupada is being self-congratulatory, but the idea is that if somebody is the, the Lord Chaitanya's mission, his prophecy was that Prithviti Achyadagaradi Gram. So those who are fulfilling that mission, they are special souls. It's not that those who are worshipping in Vrindavan and Pujari, they're not special. But Prabhupada, Prabhupada considered that mood of service more important. And you see, in Chaitanya Charitamrita also, there are many places where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is expressing very esoteric emotions of devotion for uh, in the mood of Radharani for Krishna. And Prabhupada is often talking in the purport about preaching Krishna consciousness. He says the, the, the way to enter into Radha Krishna Leela is by spreading the chanting of the holy names all over the world. So Prabhupada says things like that. So that, 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 that might seem that Prabhupada is just uh, not maybe focusing on Lord Chaitanya's mood over there. But actually, the way to enter into Lord Chaitanya's mood and appreciate him is to follow his instructions. And his instructions were, Jara Dekho Tare Kaho Krishna Upadesh. That speak Krishna's message, spread Krishna's name. So in that sense, but through the service... Uh, we will be able to enter into the service done for the pleasure of the Lord. We'll be entered into these higher uh, domains of devotion. Yes, thank you. Amarinder Prabhu. Thank you so much for it. Yes, Madam. Please, Madam. Can I make a quick yes. comment? Please, please, please. Right. We may ask a question. I mean, this service is such an important thing. Someone may ask a question. Krishna went to Mathura. Okay, what's the problem? It's not so far. You know, when Srila Radhanath Maharaj, before he became so famous and he was coming, he used to arrive to go to Vrindavan. He would ride by train to Mathura and he would walk every time from Mathura to Vrindavan. That was his regular habit because it, it's such a wonderful thing to, to approach Vrindavan in that way. So if he could do that, what to speak of the gopis, they can run easily to Mathura. So what, what is the problem? Why do we say it's such a problem that Krishna left for Mathura? And the answer is seva. Now, they may say, what's the problem? They, they can go to Mathura, they can do seva there. No, because they need those things which udipana, they need those ingredients. They need the Rasastali, they need the Jamuna, they need the Govardhan Hill, they need the Vrindavan Forest. Those are the, the ingredients they need to offer to Krishna for Krishna's full pleasure. And you know, yes, we can go to, to Mathura and we can render service, but it won't be the same. It won't give Krishna full pleasure. And so that, that's why even this very basic important principle is so uh, in, uh, permeated with that principle, Krishna leaving Vrindavan, is the gopi's desire to serve. Otherwise, they could go to Mathura. What's the problem? Mm. It's beautiful. And that's why when they meet in Kurukshetra also, they say it's not the same. We want to get you back to Vrindavan, and here we can serve you. Although it's the same, it's, they describe all the similarities, but they're for the, go. Yeah, please. 
Yes, Prabhu, Madam, please continue. And when the gopis, when, when the devotees are going to Kurukshetra, the members of the Yadu dynasty, you're blinded for hundreds of miles around from the rays of the sun hitting the piles of gold and jewels and things in the back of their chariots it, it, because they're bringing those things to give and don, to give them charity. I mean, the gopis, the bridge bossies, they're, they're coming in wooden carts. And what do they have in the back of their carts? They don't have gold and jewels and things. They have gobar, cow dung. Why are they carrying Gobar in the back of their chariots? <laughs> gobar is such a valuable thing. It is so valuable. But this particular Gobar, because Krishna likes to eat, he gets so much pleasure eating the, the prasadam, which is cooked over the fire from the bridge basi cows, the Gobar, the, those cows. So they're bringing that service to Krishna. That's their, the bridge basi's home. Even if they leave, they're thinking service. Amazing. Yes, Marindra, you want to add something concluding? Mm -hmm. I'm reminded of uh, Srila Prabodhananda Saraswati's Vrindavan Mahimamrita, where he says, Sammanam Kalayati Gora Gharalam Nicha Anam Sudha Sri Radha Murali Dharu Bhajasakhe Vrindavanam Matyaja. He says that there are four ingredients needed for rasa to manifest. The first thing is, the first person is Krishna. The second is Radha. The third are the gopis. And fourth is Vrindavan. So if you see in Kurukshetra, there was Radharani, there was Krishna and the gopis, but there's no Vrindavan. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, but however, it's possible that we could live in Vrindavan with Radha, Krishna and the gopis and still not taste anything. So what's the way out? What's the way? He says, Sammanam kalayati gora garalam nichapamanam sudha. He says that consider respect and honor to be the worst poison. And criticism by the most fallen people to be the most nectarian, ambrosial drink to accept in life. If this mood, which actually means it's a, it's a paraphrase of Dranadapi Suni Chena Tarurupi Sahishuna, he says, if we can consider respect and honor to be the worst poison, Sammanam Kalayati Ghora Garalam, the most intense, fierce poison, and Nicha Apamanam Sudha, not Apamanam Sudha, not considering dishonor to be nectarian, dishonor by the most fallen people to be Sudha, to be nectar. If that is there, then Shri Radha Murali Dharo Bhajasakhe. Then one can worship Radha and Krishna by living in Vrindavan and taste that rasa. So, so it's very interesting. Now coming back to another thing that I'm, I'm reminded, uh, Sri Padayendra Prabhu used to say, mapping Krishna Leela with Gauru Leela. He used to say that uh, Krishna Leela means Nikunja Seva and Rasa Leela. Serving Radha and Krishna in our private Nikunja, and at the same time serving Radha and Krishna together with other Sakis. And he says, when Radha and Krishna came together in this world as Mahaprabhu, all the gopis came as the Gaur Parshat, the associates of Mahaprabhu. Then what did the Nikunja Seva and the Rasalila come down as? He said the Nikunja Seva came down as Japa, and the Rasalila came out as Namasankirtha. So the public offering of our heart with other like-minded devotees is the Rasalila. And personal offering to Radha and Krishna in the Nikunja one's heart by putting our hand into the bead bag is Japa Seva. So he would say Nikunja, when one performs Seva in the Nikunja to Radha and Krishna, uh, then it catches Krishna's attention and then he includes us in the Rasalila. And on the other hand, if one performs very wonderfully in the Rasalila, then Krishna may take some personal interest with Radharani and uh, call the Sakhi uh, in, or, or, or enter into the Sakhi's grove with Radharani. So which means without Japa, which is Nikunja Seva, our Sankirtan will never go deep. We can have very melodious voice. We can be very wonderful players of instruments. But without the Japa, Nikunja Seva, one will not be able to serve enough and properly, qualitatively and quantitatively in the Rasa Leela like Sankirtan. And if the Sankirtan is not performed enough, then our Japa Yajna will never go deep. So we see a very wonderful parallel 
between Krishna Leela, Vrindavan, Gopis, Radha Krishna, with Navadvip Leela, Mahaprabhu, Gauru Parikar, the associates of Mahaprabhu, and Nikunja Seva as Japa, and uh, Radha Krishna, uh, Rasa Leela as Nam Sankirtan. And the Praman is Golokera Prematana Hari Nam Sankirtan. Again, this is coming from Sri Indra Prabhu. I was just reminded uh, by the discussion from Sri Pad uh, Madhavananda Prabhu. Amazing. So we could just go on and on. And uh, I'd love to. But it's midnight for you, Amarindra. And I know your enthusiasm is there today. But you know, you have your services tomorrow also. <laughs> um, should I try to summarize? I don't know if I can today. We did so much. Or Please. are there any, any, yes, anything no. still <laughs> wanting to explore from the heart for either of you? <laughs> any points that are still there? A lot we can discuss next week, but anything that is still you want to add, concluding either of you, Madhandra? Yeah, personally, I, I, I just this comment from Ayendra, I, I'm just going to try to digest that and relish that, and I'm just going to swirl that around in my mouth and try to taste that, and that'll probably keep me fully satisfied for at least another week. I think that was a beautiful comment to end on. <laughs> Thank you, Amarendra. <laughs> it's profound. It's a, well, I think uh, in this in this Zoom room, there's lots happening. On one side, we have the Gaur Leela coming from Chaitanya Chara. <laughs> and on the other hand, we have the Radha Krishna Leela giving Ananda to Madhava and Madhavi as Madhava Ananda Prabhu. <laughs> and I'm just the onlooker. So I'm, I'm, I'm the audience. So you, are, you are giving the nectar that is, that is enriching both of us. So Amar Indra, you know, the <laughs> immortal <laughs> And he's he's the Indra of that also. Yeah. <laughs> he's the king of that, that speech. Because he's doing it to serve his Gurudev for his pleasure. That's true. Thank you. Yes, Chaitanya Charan Prabhuji, we are we are very excited for this moment to hear the uh, I don't know. Two and a half hours. <laughs> podcast being expertly, intelligently, very devotionally, and meticulously, systematically summarized <laughs> in less than five minutes. I don't know how you do it, but it's so beautiful. Please go. Ahead. Your, your words are going to give me performance anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, we discussed the first, the second verse, just the first half of the verse. I think elaborately focused on the uh, Drusha. So you started with how Madandru, you mentioned how these the subtle difference between what the uh, Dakshina Gopis and the Vama Gopis are saying. Dakshina Gopis are saying that Krishna, you you if you go away from us, you know, we, we cannot live. So so if you're killing us, just kill us and finish it off. But whereas the go the Vama Gopis are saying that Krishna, you called us because you need us. And if you leave us desolate like this, we will die. And if you kill us, it is you who will suffer. So there are similarities, but there are striking dissimilarities. It is the Amagopi. I'm, I'm just paraphrasing over here. There are a lot of subtleties in what you spoke. And then, so this killing is, you know, that when we live for some life, losing life is very painful. But what we live for, if we lose that, that is even more painful. And for the gopis, they're living for Krishna. And then we discuss elaborately about this, the power of Krishna's glance and the mood of approaching. So initially also we started by how we are doing this for the pleasure of the Lord. We are doing this for uh, this whole Sankirtan. It's like Rama, uh, not Ramandra, Tata Aprudra, he chanted the Gopi Git for the, for the Lord Chaitanya's pleasure. Like that we are doing this for the pleasure of our Guru and for the pleasure of Lord Chaitanya ultimately. And... In one sense, this is not just necessary, it is not just acceptable, but it's essential that Lord Chaitanya, he has, this is his secret mood. That this, is, this is his essential mood. You described how Lord Chaitanya entered into, like that Lord Chaitanya is embodying this mood of uh, Radharani's love for Krishna. And unless we, uh, we appreciate that, when essential aspect of Lord Chaitanya's uh, uh, legacy is missed out. So then 
we talked about this drusha so this four attributes come and you explain very beautifully charad das sahiye so the time the place then the the charad das sadhu jata sat the well cultivated and the uh, and the well raised and then well formed also so this lotus is exquisite its beauty is stolen by krishna's glance so krishna can steal this is an amazing analysis of how krishna is the ultimate thief and this uh, we have so many this is so central to our tradition that krishna steals and uh, we could understand at various levels but you give madan ruji go this understanding that how krishna when he is stealing why is he stealing it is because when he the gopis offer themselves to him he feels that i cannot repay them so how do i repay i can borrow he can't borrow from anyone he can't work for anyone so he enters into the gopis heart to steal a little bit of their love so that he can offer them back enter the radharani's heart and then that shama sundar emerges as gaur sundar so the stealing is completely transcendental and krishna steals he can steal with any of his senses so he can steal just by the glance and if he can steal the beauty of the lotus petals which are which are what if they are in a forest so then that they are secluded they are surrounded by water they are surrounded by other lotuses they are surrounded by their own petals and still the whirl of that the beauty of the whole krishna is stealing so similarly the gopis say that now we are alone we are in the forest we are we have left our family we are here alone then you can just plunder our heart and that is what you have done krishna and now you are leaving us to die so characteristics of a thief he doesn't care for the pain caused to the for the loss caused to the victim it doesn't he the thief is uh, doesn't feel any guilt and a thief is uh, steals many times and the thief also uh, wants to is ready to kill if he is obstructed so like that krishna you are stolen from us and the, you don't understand what how much pain you are causing when you are stealing our hearts and going away and you don't feel any remorse you just left us abandoned us like this and not just one of us all of us you have done this and now are you going to kill us after this so that's better part of stealing was amazingly developed and then we went into uh, i mean you could say paroxysms of ecstasy over drusha the krishna's glance and many things many many references from scripture about the power of krishna's glance so krishna can create maintain destroy by his glance he can do that with the material existence and he can do that for our for our bhakti lata bij also he can and he can destroy the enemies the inner and outer enemies for our the progress of our bhakti and then with respect to this, this, this krishna is angani is sakalendriya that he can do everything with his, all his senses and then we went into the the elaborate correlation madan ruji talked about elaborate correlation between gaur lila and chaitanya lila in various ways so especially lord chaitanya's mood is uh, is that he is uh, worshiping that he is worship that mood of worship in separation love in separation that is manifested here by the gopis and in that connection we discussed about how lord Ch- so when, when the drusha is we when we go in front of the lord and take darshan it is not that we are taking darshan but rather we are we are not seer but we are being seen by the lord and lord chaitanya stood near the garuda stamba at one level at a, <clears throat> he stood there because at one level it is that uh, he is in the mood of radha so he just from there he can only see jagannath and not subhadra and baladev but at another level at the external level it's also that he thinks that i am such a such a fallen soul the lord may not notice me but if i stand near garuda he will notice me so it's beautiful so similarly i said that that the potency of the lord's glance the beauty of the lord's glance it is not that we just by staring at him we can catch his glance beauty rather it is when we please him by our service then he bestows his glance upon us and that's what uplifts us that's what purifies us and then also that that connection discuss how it, the mood of service is so important whether to enter into these higher moods it say we may say that if radha is so special to krishna then we just chant radha's names or Ga- or gaura's names or nityananda's names lord nityananda's names but then it is ultimately we have to please our spiritual master and when we chant krishna's names radharani is pleased when we chant krishna's names lord chaitanya wants us to chant krishna's names 
So when we chant Krishna's name, we please all of them and we get their blessings also. And he talked, uh, we talked about how towards the end, many things, but especially this uh, aspect of how the two things, the Manjuri Bhav, uh, that Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is the Manjuri Bhav Seva, that the Krishna's name, the Ram's name, the central and they're loud and the Hare is, they can be both Radharani's names and Krishna's names. And this is the Manjuri is they assist the divine couple in their service. So similarly, what we are doing with the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is we're getting the divine couple together through the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mantra. So it is quite esoteric. And you also, Adhanguru talked about this, uh, the esoteric explanation of the, the, the very esoteric sounding uh, passage from the Harinam Chintamani. The, put, the, but the essence of that esoteric passage is that this is Radharani is, ready, is, is offering herself for Krishna's pleasure. So similarly, the chanting of the holy names is where we are offering our heart and our consciousness for Krishna's pleasure. And then toward the end, that, that Nikunja Seva and the Ras Leela, which are there in, in Radha Krishna's pastimes, they manifest in Gaur Leela as Japa and Kirtan. And both of them mutually strengthen each other. So for all of us, you know, if we, for Rasa to, also for Rasa to manifest, so somebody might just go to Vrindavan, but they may not experience Rasa. The gopis could easily have gone to Mathura, but they couldn't experience Rasa because... You know, for them, they, it's not just seeing Krishna, but serving Krishna. And for that, they need the Uddipan, they need the Tadiya. And that is present in Vrindavan. So for Rasa, we need Radha, Krishna, Gopis and Vrindavan. And along with that, we need that, that mood of humility that we treat worldly honor like poison and worldly uh, and criticism even from the low, lowest of people as nectar. So when we have that uh, <laughs> humility... Then we can kirtaniya sadahari. We can become absorbed in the glories of the Lord. So this is a this is an amazing, you could say, balance of uh, transcendence of very ele elevated level of transcendence, as well as an emphasis on the pathway by which we can attain that transcendence. So thank you very much, both of you. You want to add any concluding words which I missed out, uh, or thing you want to add? Uh, Amarendra Prabhu, he he did it, didn't he? That was pretty good, wasn't it? What do you think, Amarendra? So amazing. He's, he's incredible. How you can summarize that. I, I, have a, I have a thought that if somehow I'm here on this Zoom meeting and I'm with Chaitanya Charan Prabhu and Amarendra Prabhu, maybe Chris, Krishna will definitely look at the two of you and maybe he'll see my little face over there in the box. <laughs> and maybe I'll get some blessing from that. If, if we are like Garuda, then you're like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mahaprabhu is the one. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, because you are there, that's why we are able to even dare, we are daring to enter into these discussions. That's why we are doing that. And I'd say that it's, it's, uh, it's because of your presence that whatever nectar is manifesting, your presence, your words. And yes, we do pray that Krishna glance upon all of us, Radharani glance upon all of us and give us some mercy. Well, you know, it, it's like here, here in Arisa, you have many famous Odissi dance gurus. They teach mm -hmm. Odissi dance. And one Odissi dance guru, he may have a child. And the child is like four or five months old. And the child can't even walk properly yet. Hmm. But the child is watching the father dance. And the father is so extra, so many mudras and moving in such a fluid, beautiful way. The child is trying to imitate the father. And it has no meaning. It, it, it's a joke. He, he can't even walk yet. But he's trying to imitate. But there's one benefit by the activity of that child. If it brings a smile to the face of the father, it brings some happiness to his face. So I know for myself, I, I have no Adi car to even touch these subjects. But if it brings a little pleasure to my Gurudev and to the senior Vaishnavas, then like that child who's, who's trying to dance and he can't even walk, <laughs> it has some meaning. I am in the womb, Ben. I always pray that I remain in the womb. I, I grow in the womb and live, live in the womb. But uh, I think it's a good time to finish now. He's going to start saying it. <laughs> Now there will be a competition for humility. <laughs> but I also, uh, from from the bottom of my heart, express my gratitude. Um, I, I don't understand these sections of the Bhagavatam, but uh, when I get to hear from 
Shripad Madhavananda Prabhu and Chaitanya Charan Prabhu who bring in scholarship, devotion, um, service, experience, attachment to Sri Guru and depth. Then uh, I feel very protected. So uh, thank you for including me on this. And I, and I hope, wish and pray that uh, may, may Krishna bless me with continued Sadhu Sangha for a long time. At least for me, I can say, Amanda, you are attributing to me what is present in your heart. And <laughs> although it is not present in my heart, because it is so much in there, your heart, so you are seeing it in me also. That's Atmavan Manyate Jagat, right? <laughs> in a transcendental <laughs> sense. Sri Pat Madhavananda probably is quoting verses now for all the jokes. <laughs> 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 That's an amazing application of Adva and Manate Jagat. Because <laughs> so, I am humble, I think everybody else is humble. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shloka for a joker. <laughs> <laughs> shloka for every joke. <laughs> mm, beautiful. I never, I, I mean, on a serious note, I never heard that explanation of Atma with Manate Jagat. <laughs> That, that when we are proud, we, again, I'm not saying with respect to our dealings here, but in general, that uh, principle that if someone is uh, proud and envious, then they find reasons to fight and complain about how everyone around is proud and envious. And then someone who's uh, seeing Krishna in all circumstances is appreciating that how others are all seeing Krishna in all circumstances. So and maybe in the same way, if we're part of a conspiracy to try to enjoy separate from Krishna, we're part of this conspiracy, then Jagat, we'll see all kinds of conspiracies in the world too. And there, there are people trying to control me because that's my mentality. <laughs> Beautiful, yeah. You know, I was talking with one senior Vaishnava who was very severely criticized by another Vaishnava. And, you know, others were saying, you know, he's so envious of you. So he said, no, he is so fixed in his, in his way of serving Krishna that he cannot appreciate any other way of serving Krishna. So that was such an amazing way of looking at it. So it struck me that rather than seeing the criticism, he was seeing the service attitude. Although we could, at a logical level, the criticism could be countered in many different ways. But that was Atmavan Manyate Jagat also. At the transition. In the fourth canto of the Bhagavatam, is a wonderful purport from Vishwanath where he speaks about four types of mahat and four types of asadhus. You're probably both familiar with it. Yes. There's the mahat, the mahatara, the uh, mahatat, mahat uttam, and the atya mahat uttam. And I think it's a, uh, mahat, mahatama where Vishwanath says that he gives an example that a thief comes during the winter to a person, and all the person has is his kumbo, his blanket. And the thief comes with a knife. And he takes that person's blanket away. And that person, he's such a saint, he thinks, the thief, he's a good person. And you say, how is he a good person? It's winter time. He's taking the only thing you have. That no, no, he's a saint because he had a knife and he could have hurt me, but he didn't. So obviously wow. he's a saint. <laughs> wow. That's an example. <laughs> wow. Oh, God. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. This discussion reminds me of the six Goswamis coming together, Krishna Kirtanagana, Nartana Prabhu, and, and hearing and chanting together, and the the the, the waves that that uh, the waves of Gora Rasa rising and, and flying like, like waves in the ocean of nectar. And the association, you two are like the the book uh, Karnananda describes how Shrinivasacharya every day would come together with the devotees. And they would have long discussions. Parasparanu katanam bhavanam bhagavad yasa. The Bhagavatam 11th canto says, we should learn how to come together with the devotees. And, and they would come together and they would spend hours and hours. And every day they were reading Govinda Lilamrita, Bhagavatam, and, and uh, so many different works of the Goswamis and doing kirtan and chanting japa. And that was their program every day. Instead of going to Facebook and speaking about the bad qualities of somebody. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Yeah. So thank you both so much. Thank you very much, Madam. That's a 
Maybe. Okay, I'm thinking of Amarinda Prabhu's mother. She's going to be angry with us if we, we make him stay up much later. So we should, <laughs> we should finish. Yes, bro. Thank you very much. And I'm actually thinking of my stomach, Professor Adam. Thank you, Prabhu. <laughs> Thank you. Wonderful. Let's look forward to next week once again. Thank you. This is going to make the Karthik one of the most memorable Karthiks for all of us, I think. Thank you. Definitely for me. Thank you. For me, definitely Thank also. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Madhavan Guru. Thank you, Amarindra Guru. Hare Krishna. Bancha Kalpaduru Bhishcha Kripasindu Bhyavicha Padita Hanam Pavani Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo 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 Namo